Hello, guys and girls, and welcome to episode 101 of the F Reality Podcast. This is a weekly VR, AR, and MR talk show, live streamed every Saturday on YouTube, Facebook, and on Twitch. You can also catch the show live in VR and chat with other like-minded VR enthusiasts in big screen TV. The show goes live at 7 p.m. in Europe, 6 p.m. in the UK, and 12 midday in Central US. You can also check out the audio version, which is available on iTunes, SoundCloud, Anchor, and now also on Spotify. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback during the show, please put them in the chat. We'll try and answer as many questions as we can. And of course, now it's time for me to introduce you to the team. First up, this guy is a space cowboy donning his astronaut suit this week to control space and time in VR. It's, of course, Nathy. How are you, dude? You all right? Yeah, it was uh, was awesome to go to space for the very first time. I brought my lunch, so. What I want to know is how hot were you recording with that thing on? <laughs> Ooh, that that's I can tell you that's intense. That's like working real, real hard. I I, I was wearing that suit for I think two to three hours, um, and I was I was sweating to the point where it was just you know dripping off me <laughs> and, and and then after i took it off i was like so tired because you know it looks cool but it's for space and i'm in my <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in my room you know in my office so but no it was it was fun to uh you know role play with a suit on i think you know playing vr games with a certain outfit on that fits the game yeah. i think it's awesome i love yeah. that stuff it works yeah. well. I was, I'm curious, how committed are you? Did you go for like, you said you brought your lunch with you. Did you go for like fries, freeze dried strawberries and stuff? Of course, yeah. And freezing and cookies and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're, you're confusing freeze dried with freezing, but okay, we'll go with it. <laughs> but yeah, good to uh, good to see you survived anyway, because uh, I, when I was watching your gameplay, I just thought, man, that dude's going to be hot in there. But hats off, to know. hats off to you. <laughs> Next up, he's fast and furious, always putting the pedal to the metal, it's our resident VR racing driver, of course, Zemtok5. How you doing, dude? You all right? Hey, Mike. Yeah, good. Um, good week. Nice driving. Get, good getting back behind the wheel again. Um, I, I kind of, I find I, I kind of go two weeks away from it, come back to it, and it's like, thank God I'm behind the wheel again. You know, it just feels great. So, um, yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But, um, yeah, good week. Uh, the big highlight of my week, of course, which I think I mentioned last time, and I mention again because it's been 13 years since they dropped anything. Is Tool released an album, uh, or sorry, an album uh, track? So after 13 years of no music from my favorite band, I got that, and that was huge for me. Absolutely massive spiritual endeavor. So uh, listening to that on loop for about 17 hours so far, and uh, still going. So it's go. a shame that Rowdy's not here to share that excitement. I with know. You. Like, yeah, where's my Rowdy <laughs> man? Like, I mean, yeah. this is we're we're both Tool fans. So it's yeah. funny because last week you said about me, you said, "Oh, I bet Mike's going to mention the Boys TV oh. show this show," and I knew he was going to mention Tool this show. So <laughs> we're we're like mind melding now. That's I how long we've to. been together. I, to. um, I did I did listen to it because Zim was streaming it while listening to it. Very very interesting. I've never never watched someone listen to music that intense. Um, <laughs> But uh, no, I, I did enjoy it. Never, never heard any, any, anything of, of that, you know, uh, uh, music before. But yeah. it was pretty good. There's yeah. a reason as well because Tool used to be like you had to see him live, and so I won't go on a big rant about Tool here. But you, you had to see him live. They didn't do digital at all, and so what they did just about two weeks ago is they flooded songs on YouTube, on Spotify. You can get it fucking everywhere. Um, and the best part of my week, honestly, was uh, my dad wrote me a letter back and he's like, you know, I love that song or whatever. He, he like watched this little video I put up for it. And uh, I don't talk to him that much, but to get that back and to get this kind of like fist bump from your dad it feels amazing. So that was the highlight of my week. Nice, nice. Next up, our special guest this week, always coming at you live from VR365, it's Anthony. Nice to have you on the show, man. Yeah, man. Thanks so much. Really appreciate the opportunity. Glad to be here. It's kind of like a it's like a F reality VR roundtable crossover. That's what it feels like right now. It so does. if you're a fan of both of these shows, you're gonna get the best of both worlds in this episode. Yeah, like, yeah. I've done double headers before, and this is another one. So Saturday double header time. Uh, awesome. it's, it's like a wife swap because I'm going on Anthony's show after this. So this is gonna be. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is like this is like epic, epic, uh, like Avengers coming together. You yeah. know, like there's this crossover you never expected before. Yeah. And now epic. it's happening. Now it's real. Epic collapse for sure. Yeah. Last it's like the. It's like by the way, it's like the the X Men, 
meeting up with the Avengers. That's, that's what it feels like. <laughs> the, yeah, I, I want to know who the Avengers is in this case. Like, I have no idea. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Tangents aside, last but by no means least, myself, the host of the show, Mike from Virtual Reality Oasis. We've got a packed show for you today. Some of the highlights include Zim, our resident racer, giving you his thoughts on Dirt Rally 2.0. The hype intensifies as No Man's Sky is back on sale just before it's released next week. Apple is looking to hire people for AR and VR devices, which may or may not be coming soon. It's kind of interesting. Zim's going to give you the lowdown on the releases look to look forward to next week. And finally, uh, a little bit about how this podcast started over 100 episodes ago. And we're going to talk about the history and how we got into this sort of uh, show in the first place. So if you enjoy that, you're going to be interested into uh, in, into the past of it. So um, let's start off, find out what everyone's been playing this week and the highlight of the week. Let's uh, fire it over to Nathy first. What's your highlight of the week this week, dude? So I honestly have not played that much. I feel like at the moment, releases wise, it's pretty dry. We're all waiting for No Man's Sky and Red Matter and some of those titles, right? Mm -hmm. um, there were a lot of releases, but then I usually see a lot of the same games, like another dance game or another this or another that. Mm -hmm. So I was happy that I got the opportunity to play Time Stall. Mm. Uh, Forcefield and I met up a couple of weeks ago where I got to try one of their demos. And uh, it's funny that back then I said like, wow, this is, this is a, a cool VR puzzle game in space, but I should wear a suit, you know, to, you know, get more immersed. So I came up with this with this idea and I knew I was going to regret it in some way because <laughs> I, like spacesuits are thick, you know. Um, but then in the end, I did play it with the suit on. I think it looks awesome. It was hard to play because you have these gloves on and they are ginormous. So they are so ginormous that I can't feel me pressing the buttons anymore. And that's why it took me three hours to record 20 minutes of gameplay. Yes. <laughs> did your hands uh, even with the gloves? Did they did they even fit into the what, what did you what headset did you play it with actually? I uh, it's it's only on the Quest. It's oh, a right. Quest. So it uh, was yeah, but those I mean the Oculus touch controls don't have it did much. Fit, but it was more like I sometimes the buttons were just like stuck between my gloves. Yeah. Like it, it 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 wasn't it was it was a challenge, but in the end I did it and it looks nice. So that's that's what we do it for. But yeah, Time Stall is basically a game in where you um, join a cruise ship in space. It's like the Titanic in space. It looks like the Titanic, funny funny enough. And you uh, join the crew. Now this crew exists out of robots. You're the only human and uh, they go haywire after a while. And then you need to make sure that everything stays nice and clean. And the way you do this is by using a mode in where you can freeze time. And it, it, it doesn't completely freeze, it still moves a bit. It's like the matrix, very, mm -hmm. very slow. And then you're like Quicksilver and you need to change things around to make, you know, the, uh, make everyone, you know, uh, uh, safe so they don't get hit by objects, whatever. And every time you get a new scenario and it gets crazier and crazier, the more you play, the more chaotic it becomes. And I think you have around maybe like at the start, like two minutes to change up the scene and just come up with the craziest thing ever. And uh, I think the best part about this puzzle game is that there are a lot of possibilities of how you can solve uh it's not like you know if you watch my video then yeah that's one way you could um you know solve the the situation but there are so many other things you can do too um and they uh, they work with challenges so you can even you know rediscover scenes replay them and try to you know get that one challenge mm -hmm. um, so it's 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 a fun game uh, in space with a with a great story i think that's always welcome in in the vr scene it's it's a polished title. It works works fine. Um, so yeah, that's that's like time stall. How does, in a it, hey, how does it play have progress? You played... Go on, Anthony. Uh, did you ever play Just in Time Incorporated? Yeah, it's, it's kind of had that pause yeah, no, thing. Exactly, a little it's bit like the that. Same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. Um, but this time, you know, with actual like characters that you know you let's say build a relationship with you have these cute robots that you always oh. feel like oh you know hey let's eat pizza together because you can call like you know this this pizza guy and then you can eat pizza <laughs> together with the robots it's it's great and they are always hungry um i didn't know robots uh 
were eating pizza because I thought they only need like power and stuff. But hey, uh, you learn something every day, right? <laughs> and this is uh, exclusive to Quest. It's not going to come to Rift. You no, don't think? no, no, no. This is uh, this is a game that has been made with Forest Field and uh, Oculus. So this is a collaboration, um, and um, it's 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 weird to be playing a game like this after they made National Geographic, Explore VR, hmm. and Frank, Coaster Combat. This is like, I think this is the best thing they made uh, so far. Um, and um, yeah, I, I think it's gonna do well on the store. Uh, I hope it's not gonna, you know, um, lose the hype next week uh, with the <laughs> whole No Man's Sky, you know, because uh, the press is now getting the opportunity to uh, uh, cover it, uh, but it's coming out in September. So it's gonna take a while, but yeah, a, a game to look forward to for sure. Oh, uh, Time Store is coming out in September. As far as uh, like, oh, okay. uh, as far as I know, on the trailer it said September. So okay, no, nope. it's just that right now with the press covering it, it's you know. Well, yeah, it's actually I a think... it's August release. Yeah, yeah, Seriously, Thursday. If, it's if Thursday. You, if you are a developer now, sorry. I was just gonna say, Red Matter is coming out the same day as Time Stall, yeah. and also like the the uh, Zen Pinball Pinball FX Two VR that's yeah. coming out on the fifteenth. <laughs> And I wonder why does Oculus do this? Give like give these games like a week to breathe and breathe, then yeah. next one the next week. You know? It's 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 like as far as I know, Oculus always if they work together, of course they decide when it goes up. I think the same happened with uh, for example like Apex, where they tell them like, hey, listen, uh, this is when you're going to launch your game. Mm. Uh, it's uh, it's interesting, but all I can say is that if you are a developer, don't launch your game next week. Never launch a game with a behemoth title. It's the ba best thing you can do, but no. I don't know. I mean, like, I, I'm a little bit of a different opinion on that because the behemoth yeah. does one thing. It drives people's hype up, and it also drives people to stores and storefronts to be, like, glued to the screen and drives purchases. Now, I think True. that if they're going to time it, go before rather than after. I think dropping after a mega, you know, a mega title drops mm. is maybe yeah. a bad move because what then happens is it's like an overshadowing so big thing drops the thing that that's there on the day or second day after it people are busy playing the first title and then um you know weeks go by and the next title grabs their attention so they miss it they miss the beat and that's what yeah. i'm concerned about but, but also like dropping on the same day as red matter like there's a lot of hype around red matter and like having played it now that the embargo's dropped early uh, i can talk about it a little bit but basically um you know it, it, it looks incredible it's like the best looking quest game we've got you know um so so dropping it on the same day as that like like uh, anthony said it would be nice if they kind of like spaced it out a bit more i don't know why oculus is doing that mm -hmm. uh why why give everything away at the same time like the same right now with the quest store they aren't there isn't that much going on and i'm kind of like you know then you finally have some fun games but then you just launch them all at the same time just like you know launch a game and a few weeks later you launch the next one so people have time to play one and then play the next one i think yeah. it will increase sales as well if you give people the opportunity to first finish that game mm -hmm. and then go to the next one yeah i had a quick question Nathan, on, on time stall because having looked at it i wasn't too clear do you actually like move around the space or are you kind of fixed in one spot when you're solving these um, puzzles so this is this is and 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 i want more games like this um it's a room scale experience Actually, it needs like five to six feet as far as I know. You don't have to because you have stick locomotion wow. and also teleportation. But if you have the space, then you can just walk around and, and change things around you while you uh, freeze time. So they made this for like an actual room skill experience. And it's wow. funny, most of the titles for Quest are standing experiences. And that's a shame because it's a standalone headset that has the freedom. So this game, if you have enough space, maybe you can like you know clean up your living room a bit. It's great. If you have all the space, it's going to be super fun. That's awesome. I really like the idea of that. Yeah, that yeah. sounds cool. Yeah, I'll check it out. So uh, I think are you going to be covering it in releases, Sim? Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll okay. cover it off and we'll show people what the game looks like. And yeah, all that. we'll remind yeah. you later. I, on I, the, I was kind of effing under my breath there because I was like, "Damn it, Anthony, you just hit one, two, and three on my releases." But um, <laughs> you know, good on you. That's it. Just shows you know you're 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 knee deep in the news just as you need to be. Him. So he knows. He knows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's pass it over to Zim then. Uh, what was your <laughs> sort of highlight this week then, dude? So when I wasn't listening to music, um, I was listening to music and punching walls uh, in a game called O Shape. Uh, for which I donned, thank you chat, a uh, what we call a cyber suit, which is a full body green suit. 
and uh, get dancing. Uh, and you form your body in, in certain shapes. I mean, they have you do everything from dabbing and all this kind of stuff, uh, crossing your hands above your head. And I thought, well, for a, a game where there's no feet tracking, it, it's not going to be very intense. I was wrong. Um, I was very wrong. So the game like shifts your you know splayed feet pattern, like this and this and this all over the place, all over the gaff. And uh, at the same time, you have to like pick up orbs, punch walls as they come, kind of like those Beat Saber walls that come at you that you have to dodge. You have to dodge them, and you have to make body shapes. And then they've got um, it was a, it was kind of an early beta, um, so access is still restricted to the game, but it's gonna be coming out in early access at some point soon. Um, I played it on Oculus Home, and I don't know if it's going to be an Oculus exclusive or not. Um, but that's all I've heard about it, so it no, might be. No, no, no. It's also it's coming Steam? to uh, yeah. Okay, so um, I really liked the game. I thought that the music that they picked reminded me of my first early days with like Beats Fever. <clears throat> For those who know that title, which was a, a precursor, you know, it was about a year before Beat Saber ever landed. And I really yeah. liked the tunes that they picked. They just didn't have enough. So there was like four tracks with like low, medium, and hard difficulty. Hard difficulty, feck's sake, that was tough. Um, and I was, like Nathie in the in the astronaut suit, in my cyber suit, I was a bucket of sweat by the end of the night. So, um, loads of fun. One to look out for. If you're looking for an exercise title and you haven't had, you know, enough in that space, that's definitely one. So, um, yeah, how much do I have to pay you guys to get into a cyber suit yourselves? It's so funny, like, uh, you know, Zim's really downplaying this, but if, you should really just go and check out Zim's Twitter to check out the little clip, because basically, like, this cyber suit is a green suit, so he had, like, psychedelic <laughs> colors being projected on his body. It, it basically, if you watched it, it's like looking at the Hypnotoad. That's basically the what hypno -toad. it is. <laughs> That's basically what it is, so you should go check it out just to see Zim in this crazy suit. I need to target some celebrities and be like... <laughs> Yeah. Give me some money, you know. <laughs> it looks great. So hats fun. off to the stream, man. It looked yeah. great. Oh, it was um, their idea as well. I really didn't want to do it that night. I was tired, but yeah. Thank you. They're genius. That, they're was genius. that was it. That was it. Um, so let's pass it over to Anthony then. What what have you been playing this week, dude? Have you got something you want to sort of highlight, share with us this week? Yeah. I, well, I've played like basically like three things this week. Uh, there, there's this thing called Sheaf together ep and it's like just kind of a chill out music kind of a thing where you're, you're in a car and the car's driving along and then you you can't move or anything you're just sitting in the driver's seat and you see scenery and there's like cool music playing and i think there's like three or four music tracks that play during it and you're just it's just like a really chill relaxed experience it's 100 percent free i recommend anybody that has like a valve index or anything like that Hop on Steam. It's Sheaf Together EP. It's really cool. Um, another thing I tried was Sports Scramble on the Rift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys tried it. I was disappointed actually with Sports Scramble on the Rift because it is a straight port. Like, I don't notice, like, usually when Quest games come to the Rift, the colors might be a bit more vibrant, or you might notice the frame rate is, is uh, boosted a bit. And to me, it looks pretty much identical, but I only played it for mm. about 25 minutes. I love the bowling though. The bowling is awesome. Yeah. I was hoping <laughs> Oculus would lower the price though, because 30 bucks, kind of harsh, right? Yeah. That's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a 15 quid game, uh, to be honest. So, Or should yeah. be, yeah. should be, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, you do have the demo, awesome. right? That you can play for free on the Quest, oh, yeah. I think. Yeah, on they the should Quest. do the demo on, on PC as well. Why don't they have any demos, right? I did, yeah, yeah, that's a good Oculus point. Oculus has a problem with demos. <laughs> I'm yeah. on the thrift store. <laughs> Definitely could use some more demos. But I mean, sport. I, I think the uh, Sports Scramble is such a nutty game. It's like such a weird, wacky, tobacky game. <laughs> with the uh, modifiers, you mean? <laughs> yeah, with the modifiers turned on. I mean, if you turn <laughs> yeah. that stuff off, but that's on by default, right? So the mm -hmm. modifiers just makes it so odd. And as like a tennis player who was really jiving for like a tennis game, I was like... What is going on with the ball? It's it's it's, it's not sports anymore. Oh, I think not. the baseball one is the best because I played it with Mike, and then every time I wanted to throw, but then I didn't do. It. I was like, okay, here it comes, and I'm ah. <laughs> Spring. faking yeah. them out. Yeah. yeah. So I'm curious. Like, the, the, actually, the bowling was one of my favorites as well. I thought it was like really well done, especially when you're picking the ball up. I suppose out of all the mini games that it has, Anthony, it wasn't. Um, uh, it wasn't really one to test like cable twist because you're not really spinning in place on 
on bowling, right? So. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not too bad with that. No. But the bowling is really cool. Like all, like they have like Galaxian, like you're playing Galaxian while you're bowling. <laughs> like that is super cool. Who's Galaxian? I don't know who that is. It's like the, the arcade machine, right? The old, yeah, the old school yeah. arcade, like Galaga, Galaxian, whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and what was the third game? Because you was going to mention a third game as well, right? Oh, well, the third game is Red Matter. But if you guys want to wait a little, like if Mike, you're going to talk about Red Matter, I could talk about it with you because I've actually played that the last two nights. Didn't think I'd be able to talk about it, and apparently the embargo has been uh, canceled, so you're free yeah. to talk. About it. Yeah, no, no, go for it. I'm going to talk about a different games, so you can talk about Red Matter because I think it's kind of interesting uh, to talk about. Yeah, so Red Matter on the Quest, like you guys probably saw that video that came out like a few mm -hmm. days back and it looked incredible. Like it looked unbelievable. Like there's no way this is real. And playing the playing the real game on the Quest, um, I've got good news and bad news. So, so the good news is probably the best looking Quest game period. Mm -hmm. Bad news, I would say, is that it doesn't look quite as good as just that environmental video where it's kind of giving you like a third person camera from far away where it's just showing the environments like that look drop dead, drop dead gorgeous but when you're in the physical game mm. you're looking around at stuff some of the stuff does look unbelievable but other stuff you're kind of looking at like backgrounds and they're kind of uh vaseline -y a little bit kind of pixelated a little bit chunky in certain spots so like if you took a PC VR uh, graphics whore type person and you put them into Red Matter, they could still complain about things. But on the other hand, it looks freaking incredible. Like it really does. And the sound is incredible. And it is Red Matter. Like I played the PlayStation VR version. I thought Vertical Robot basically brought about 85% of the game onto PlayStation VR, which is impressive. And this one, it's pretty it's like almost identical to the playstation vr version and that yeah. is an incredible achievement when it's completely wireless and you've got freedom to move around and all of that i think one of the most impressive things to me from a graphical standpoint is the lighting effects that they use because say if you look at robo recall for example everything looks very flat in robo recall mm. there's not really any dynamic lighting going on mm. whereas even in the menu of red matter when you you yeah. point the laser pointer you can see the lighting reflection on the floor and you're like holy crap this is so nice and i think for people that have never played it on pc like they won't know any difference so they're just going to think like this is incredible mm -hmm. looking and of course with with this game same thing that happened with vader is that the foveated rendering is kind of noticeable a bit yeah. more because it's so beautiful in the middle and then when you slightly move your eyes a little bit left or right you can see it getting more pixelated at the edges mm -hmm. but you know i think it's a standout title for the quest i think it will be like you know the bar has been raised now by vertical robot as like this is how you can yeah. really port a game to quest so i'm excited and to see what other developers this, do. this game this game has like as i said very very solid gameplay it looks good but it's mm. also very, you know, uh, impressive in terms of what you can do with your hands. Oh yeah, uh, and I, I, I think it's gonna sell like way better than the PC version. Mm. Uh, I yeah, think this it, is. Uh, it, I think it was one of those gems that kind of got lost on PC for some oh, reason. Totally. Yeah, um, totally. Yeah, totally. This the story is crazy. Like the story wasn't my favorite part of the game. It's all about the puzzles, in my opinion. But the mm. puzzles are some of the best puzzles I've ever played yeah. in VR. So I haven't played through it. I, completely again on the quest but um yeah. i'm looking forward to doing that tomorrow uh, or, or monday so yeah, yeah totally agree if you if you're into quest then this is a, a title that you've really got to check out for sure so you know i was just going to say real quick one of the cool things vertical robot has done with like all of these ports that they've done is like regardless of whatever platform it's on if it's on the oculus platform they had the cv1 controllers when it, you know, they, they always put the controllers in the game and they model the controllers perfectly. So like you're looking at the Quest controller, but they make it look like it's part of your spacesuit, mm -hmm. and the controller is perfect. And like you're, you're interacting with the controller, you're pushing up, middle and down to like change what your controller does where it's like a grabby hand or it's like this little LCD screen. And the LCD screen is crystal clear every word crystal clear sharp as hell there was one little section i was in in the game i'm not going to spoil anything but there's one section where it has like 
tile, like little tiny tiles that are all over the walls. And the floor is, is like a reflective floor and it is so bright in that room. The downside, you do notice the fovi the fixed foveated rendering. Yeah. And for some people, it's a major turnoff. But man, that room looks gorgeous. And it's just an example of what the Snapdragon 835 is capable yeah. of now that they're overclocking it and all that. Because I was worried when I first heard about the Quest, Snapdragon 835, I'm like, really? Oh, man, why, why that one? Why yeah. not the 845? <clears throat> um, but it goes to show you a talented developer can make that hardware sing. So yeah. and this is, yeah. this is just like straight out of the, this is straight out of the bag, right? Like we're not, um, we're not even talking a year into, you know, in, into post-production development here. It's, and yeah. there's going to be more tricks. Yeah. We were talking about this last episode. Um, so th according this to is the developers, um, it did take, it took two people eight months to port it over to Quest. And they, they said they basically yeah. almost remade the whole game. Like it would have been easier for them to just make a new game, they said. <laughs> um, so they, they put a lot of work into it, so. I, I think I think we they will now get the recognition they deserve where some, like everyone is suddenly on red, like, whoa, this game is amazing. Well, it already came out like a while ago. Yeah, yeah. It, it, this, this definitely deserves way more attention. Also yeah. what deserves attention is our chat because they have been playing some games as well. Uh, yeah, that's a nice crossover, right? <laughs> beautiful. I, 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 I almost sound like Linus when he starts doing the, you know, advertisement. That's that's mm. how I feel right now. Um, but anyways, uh, we have David uh, who played uh, uh, modded Skyrim and Vivecraft. DJ Gaming uh, went into Beat Saber. We have Sponge Seven Twenty. Uh, he played Fallout with the Omni, uh, a behaptic suit, and a gun stuck. With the Omni. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah, that yeah, the first time we're hearing about Gamers. someone playing with an Omni? My God. Yeah. Gamers, gamers are upgrading right now. Uh, we have John Wood who played Dirt Rally 2.0. Uh, Rochi played uh, uh, Audica. He really liked it. Mm -hmm. um, then we have uh, Neo yeah. who played uh, the updated Record Fury. It's awesome now. That's what he says. Uh, I wonder why it wasn't awesome before. I liked it before. But, uh, no, Racket Fury was awesome out of the box. I fucking love that game. It's brilliant. Who knows? Um, uh, Watto, he uh, played uh, Skyrim VR on the Pimax, a bit of Dirt Rally 2, and then jumped into Rec Room with Zim and Doc last night. Oh, yeah. Oh, we had a big, oh. big paintball game. That was amazing. Actually, it's funny. You mentioned uh, the fixed foveated fovea rendering. In the paintball, I, I noticed it. And it's funny because you like, even though I've spent a lot of time with the quest, every so often it, it makes you do like a spit take. You're like, mm -hmm. what, what was that? Oh, right. And then you move on. But yeah, yeah that's all it does. Especially if it's like a hard edge, like uh, Invader and, and, and Red Matter, it's like a hard square edge. Mm. Some games it's not. Um, so so they can also, it's not a some defenders some have like a gradient where it kind of... Now I noticed the same actually in uh, Time Stall 2, mm -hmm. where they had like in the in the shadow, they had like a little, you know, a digital board and I mm. couldn't read anything anymore. When you when you look your yeah. eyes up, if you're looking yeah, exactly. straight ahead, it's it's perfectly clear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you had to like target yeah. it to it's, read. It's so um, not a deal breaker for me. You know no, what I mean? Like, it, not so. Like, no. like what Anthony was saying, right? The hardware. When you think about it, it's like, oh my god, it was so yes, funny because we were playing on the Quest, right? And someone's like, I think that the Quest should be three hundred dollars, not four hundred dollars. I said, no fucking way, dude. Like, <laughs> I was like, I know this is somebody who doesn't understand economics and technology because I get that that's where you want the the price to be, but it should, for all rights, be six hundred. Hey, you know? Don't like, don't underestimate Santa. Uh, just saying. That's a good um, point. So uh, Oni Case uh, played uh, Downward Spiral. Uh, this is a game you should play with someone else if you uh, like to, you know, mm -hmm. if you let's say like Lone, Lone Echo, but then multiplayer in a way, yeah. right? Come on, um, yeah. yeah. Then we have G27. Yeah, everyone played a lot of games. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, he just got around uh, playing Primordian. Very impressed considering size of Dev Studio, Stonebox Studios. I think it's only one person as far as I know. Um, great environments, melee and exploration. Meatball played Battlezone, Rec Room, uh, Hero Bound, Spirit Champion. Good game for cheap. And then we have two more, all, almost there. Uh, Flavorless uh, played Beat Saber on the quest and got, and got a black eye from playing too hard. Whoa! Uh, and Michael Fletcher has been playing Carnage Chronicles. Can't get enough. Need to get some friends to play it with. Lol. Um, beware of the spiders, by the way. Mm. You... Interesting that someone played Battle Battlezone after we mentioned it on the show, uh, you know, a week or two ago. Maybe that's why. It's such yeah. a good title, though. I'm still trying Thanks. to find people to get together and play it. It's, it I, as yeah. I said, for me, with space tanks, it's like from other suns. It's like yeah. really quality. 
Yeah, cool. So, like, um, the game I want to highlight this week yeah. is uh, Until You Fall. Now, uh, we mentioned this previously on episodes of the podcast, and uh, it's an upcoming roguelite sword fighting game from oh. the team at Shell Games. Hmm. They're the, the team that previously made uh, I Expect You to Die, which Sorry. was an excellent did, just quali- game. qualification. Uh, did you say roguelite as opposed to roguelike? Roguelite. <laughs> L-I-T-E. Okay. Roguelite. It's got some roguelite elements, okay. and I'll get into that. Um, I was given uh, early access to check out the game. It's in closed beta right now, so it's not like everyone's got access to it, but it's uh, releasing in early access on the 27th of August, so not too long to wait. Uh, Right now, it's only uh, Rift and Vive that are supported, so um, no index support if you've got an index, Uh, but the devs are planning to add that shortly after the uh, sort of early access release. There is kind of like a a rough story to it. Basically, you play like uh, the remaining rune knight the last one of its kind and your realm has been destroyed by these monsters and and beasts and basically you've got to kind of fight back to reclaim your land so that's kind of like an interesting story um but basically it's like a melee combat game so you've got a weapon in each hand you've got uh you can either have a sword or an axe in one hand as your sort of main weapon and then a, a sort of variety of different daggers in your other hand uh and these can be basically upgraded over time you know, you can go back and upgrade these. Uh, so you basically fight through these kind of stages with creatures, and they progressively just get harder and harder and harder. And you kind of have to... It's kind of got this interesting combat mechanic in that the attack patterns of the enemies kind of flash up very quickly on screen, so you know where to put your sword to block or parry their attacks. So it's the dance central of combat fighting. It, it, but you, you say that, but it, it's very true. It's got a rhythm to this game. It's got a rhythm to it, and the music really? is excellent. Oh, so yeah. it is rhythm. Oh my it's god, not, I like I like this already. So it's not rhythm. It's not like a rhythm game, but no. the combat has a rhythm to it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I understand. That you want to get into the flow of. That's awesome. like old school. Like old school video games was always like, oh, after this tune, then I need to strike. Yes, although the music doesn't go in time with the rhythm. Sadly, it kind of the music feels like is good. It. Yeah, you the can music- use it to kind of learn how to fight the enemy. You use the music to yeah, yeah, focus. like exactly. Like it's got this kind of retro wave beat to it, which is super cool. Gets you hyped, uh, and then you're fighting all these enemies, uh, which is super fun. And then every now and again, you'll meet a new enemy, and you're like, oh crap! Like I've got a you, you're excited and scared at the same time because you're like. I've, I've gone all this way. I've played for like half an hour or 20 minutes. I'm, I'm sweaty as it is. I just want to keep going. And then this like big dude will just completely wreck you. Like, because you only get three lives. You get hit three times, you're out, you're dead. And then if you're dead, you have to start right at the very beginning again. And that's oh. what I mean by it's a rogue light in that you, your progression isn't permanent. You get sent back to the beginning again when you die. But the currency that you earn from completing the stages and um, collecting them after each stage as a bonus doesn't. is permanent, so no, you doesn't. get to carry that back. And this is oh. kind of where things get interesting, because at first you're going to get smashed to pieces by everything, <laughs> because you're learning the game, enemies are very brutal and hard, then they're not forgiving in any way. Um, but then you start going back, you start thinking about things, you start upgrading your weapons, uh, your, your abilities, and then you start learning the patterns, and then you get better and better and better, and it's it's got that really rewarding gameplay loop about it. Um, and I was playing it and playing it and playing it until I got up to the first boss, and oh my god, like the first boss is like this huge gremlin, like evil looking thing, you're like, holy crap. And I got so close to, to killing him on my first go, my heart was like pounding, I was so excited but he just destroyed me. And then I was like, right, okay, screw this guy. Went back, upgraded all my stuff, and then went through it again, and then finally beat the first boss. Uh-huh. But then after the first boss, then you're straight into another stage, which leads you up to another boss that's coming on later down the line. So you're like, holy crap, this game is relentless. So I think the game is super fun right now. I think it's like a really great, promising start for the uh-huh. game. I'm a little bit worried about the variety in the game because although it's procedurally generated, like the enemies uh, and locations and environments are procedurally generated, it does feel a bit samey right now. Mm. Um, yeah, thema- but- thematically, does it change up or is it actually quite fixed in terms of the environment around you? Or is it like that bush is now over there, you know? Exactly. That, like the, the environments are great, by the way. They're very bright and vibrant, but. Yeah, it's kind of like, oh, it's a little bit different layout, or the enemies are a little bit different, but you're kind of fighting the same few beginning enemies, if you know what I mean, and then you get onto the little harder mm. ones, and then... It, so it, it doesn't feel that mm. that 
much variety right now. But I think because they're launching in early access and they really want uh, the community feedback on the game, that's yeah, yeah. really where the game's going to progress. Um, I kind of thought it would be interesting to have like branching paths. So if you get to a, the end of each stage, yeah, you're like, okay. okay, you can go this way that's got harder enemies, but you get better loot, or you can go the easy mm -hmm. path if you feel like you need to get more lives because you've maybe been thrown about a bit the first stage. Yeah. That would also uh, attract a, a bigger audience because you this is this sounds like a game you need to like if you want to go you know Dark Souls level. Exactly. Yeah, brutal but satisfying. Um, and I think some people will be put off because it's quite arcadey. Like, don't get me wrong, it's not like Blade and Sorcery, for example, which is more of a kind of like a ragdoll simulator. This is more of like a you're going to get beaten up and you're going to need to focus, but this is going to be arcadey and fun and a workout yeah. as well. So I'm curious, uh, where does it, does it slot into, you know, if you had a, a weekly regime or twice a week, you're exercising in VR. Oh, yeah. Would this game slot in there then? Yeah, for sure. Like I felt it, especially in my right arm, like the next day. Like when you play Beat Saber 2 rigorously, yeah. you know, you feel it the next day. It was a bit like that. So, and I was sweating buckets by the end a of it. A bit Obviously, like the black eye fella who we had, or lady earlier, who was saying they got a black eye playing Beat Saber. I'm yeah. so curious how that happened, by the way. So please tell us in chat. I'm very interested. Well, because I'm I, the, the one place where the uh, quest hurt me the first time I used it was my nose. Because when you spin your head left or right too fast, because it's relatively weighty, it like. Yeah. knocks into your nose by just mm. doing that like if you get yeah. scared do you remember playing um i think it was face your fears in that first yeah. room which they had all specified out yeah yeah exactly so um but this game really would be exciting like, yeah this game would be ideal on quest like i really hope it comes to quest a lot of people in the comments yeah. of my video were saying please come to quest yeah. hopefully that happens uh later mm. down the line if the game gets good yeah. support on pc but they, they want everything on quest like, oh, hey, I, yeah, yeah. like, like everywhere. It's like, hey, is this guy? It's not coming to the quest. Then I, uh, I hate it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's got to be so sick of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's happening all the time. Oh, it's not coming to quest. Yeah, then it must suck. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Push the port button. Push the port button. Come on, it's yeah. easy. The eight month port button. <laughs> also, uh, also before we uh, continue, uh, I want to give a big shout out to everyone who joined us uh, on the party mm -hmm. at Altspace. Uh, it was super fun. I think we should do it more. Um, and uh, yeah, no, it was great. It really felt like it happened, you know? Yeah. I told so many people, so like, yeah, we had this party and it was crazy with fireworks and, and basketball and we did karaoke and uh, no, it's, 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 it's awesome. Yeah, and I said it, I would it, give a shout out to Alyssa who made the party bus level. Um, yeah, we yeah. talked to her, we got the background story and all that, it was really good. Uh, if you didn't yeah. miss it, I've got a video up on my channel. If you wanna go watch that and see what, what the hundredth episode party was all about. <laughs> As Nathy described it, it was pretty mental. Um, it was great, it was just, great, great turnout though, and the fact that it was kind of like short notice that we told people like two, three days before um, yeah. turned out really, really well. I was, I had a lot of fun. And people like you know, it was just great to meet people that were fans of the show, like just asking yeah. questions about the show and how it all started. So that's kind of what inspired us to do this kind of bit at the end of this week's show to tell you a bit about the history of how it all began. Uh, but we'll get into that later on. So let's dive into some news first. First bit of news this week is something to be very happy about, as the hype is building and building about No Man's Sky. Oh my god. I'm looking forward to seeing Anthony's thoughts on No Man's Sky. Like, did you ever play this before VR? No, because you know what? When VR hit, I just said flat gaming goodbye. <laughs> I'm VR 100 percent I play no flat games. And I think when VR first started, that was right when No Man's Sky was like yeah. just launching, right? Yeah, so yeah. I, I just ended up missing it completely. So for me, it's going to be starting from the ground up, knowing I don't know nothing. I've never even watched videos about No Man's Sky. I don't know anything. It's going to be awesome. That's the way to yeah, go I, into it, though. That really yeah, I, is. I mean, like, I, Anthony's saying that, and I'm like, you're my brother in this space, because I went into Skyrim and Hellblade and Alien, all these games, like, just a VR virgin uh, and a game virgin. And... Uh, they're my favorite titles. Like, it's just, it's so great. So I'm, I've got huge hopes for this thing. I just hope the uh, game loop is satisfying. Yeah. So if you've been living under a rock and you didn't know, No Man's Sky is getting VR support next week on the 14th of August. And the VR support is coming in the form of a free update to the base game on PC and PSVR. Yeah. Uh, and to make things even better, because we mentioned this last week on the show as well, but it was full price last week. Now the game is on sale again, 50% off. So smart. Steam and Humble Bundle. So right now, it's 19 pounds and 99 pence, or 29.99 in US dollars. And 
this deal is going to be live on Steam up until the 21st of August. So even if you're kind of on the fence about it, you can hold off for the reviews and the Let's Plays and really get a feel for the game in VR before you buy it. You're not going to miss out on the deal. Um, but it's not just PC owners. PlayStation owners are going to be happy as well because the game is even cheaper for them. They're getting a 54% discount, making the game $15.99 in British pounds, $24.99 in US dollars, which is an absolute bargain. Like this game, I know it's been out for like, what, two years? But they've constantly and consistently updated this game to make it better and better. Um, oh, that's nuts. So, that's nuts. It's not a comeback. What a comeback from yeah. like the start where it was like the most controversial game ever yeah. uh, to what it is now. I'm surprised. I, I thought this game could have like could not come back from what happened to them. But then uh, if you see it now, it's like it's like a legit game. Yeah, I think the problem was that it was such an ambitious idea and and PlayStation like hooked onto this and were like, this is amazing. It's on our platform. Let's push this, push this, push this. And I don't think Hello Games were really ready for that. Um, you know, it, it's amazing when you go back and listen and watch the interviews with uh, you yeah. know, the main guy there. Uh, but we don't know how long this deal is on PlayStation, by the way. So, um, you know, it might elapse yeah. before the game's release. Just be aware of that if you want to jump on the PSVR uh -huh. version of the game. So Part of the derailing of that train, though, the hype train, um, is the Internet's fault. You know, like, because what the problem is that, like, the net picked up on that concept of, of the game. Everyone got super excited about it. Then, as you say, Mike, they pushed it and they just couldn't deliver against it. But I, huh. I think it, it takes balls to actually put, you know, to double down and say, I, you know, despite like what Nathy said, right? It's kind of the game that you thought wasn't going to bounce back from this. That They were knocked to the mat. And now they've managed to get up again. Yeah. Will they come through fight and punch? And if they are, if they know they've got something great, I mean, they've heard, they're still building hype again, so they must have learned from their last time through. They must know they've got something good to be pushing it. And the sales, like you said, th that is the smartest move. They're going to, like, triple the sales that they would have had if, if the price was higher or more. Yeah. It's, no, great. It's, it's great to see them, you know, uh, reviving the game and, and making it better and better because there are also companies that don't. You know, like EA made Anthem. Well, they abandoned it. It's not coming yeah. back. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, true. it's great to see No Man's Sky, you know, living up to its full potential. And with yeah. VR, I hope it's going to be the same uh, story. I really hope this lives up to the hype. I really do. But like you guys, uh, I've never played it before. It's going to be my first time in VR. I bought it in the sale, uh, which was a summer sale. Um, so, yeah, I'm super hyped for it. it. It's coming next week. So we're going to be talking about it on next week's show without doubt. So I, I, if you want to wait... I was just going to say, I'm, I'm a little nervous about the basic gameplay loop from the original game. Now, I know they've changed it with Next and now with Beyond, but I, I'm still like, I'm still, I'm still nervous and trying to downhype myself because um, I know someone who I've worked with, uh, Angry Joe, like he did a great video of it, and the first like two minutes of his review is him going. <laughs> and then, like picking up resources or something and he just like the whole point of that was to you know expand upon this is a boring <laughs> initial gameplay loop and from friends of mine who've played it they said that that's kind of like the main yeah. problem with it and because it's, its closest cousin is Elite Dangerous like I, I want something that fulfills that need better than Elite did, you know? And if it, if it does that, I'll be very happy with it. Because it's color, bright and colorful and cheery like I like, yeah. but... Uh... So, talking about the Quest cult, is there a possibility they can play this <laughs> with a... Oh. In a different way, you know? Even like, like virtual uh, desktop using, or something yeah, like that? using a stream, yeah. streaming function? Yeah. Yeah, they could. Yeah, yeah, they could. I'm sure, you know, uh, using ALVR, RiftCat, or virtual desktop with the side loaded. Yeah. Uh, virtual desktop mod on side quest. I think uh, you'll be able to play this game on quest. Yeah, for sure. For those who haven't played with those uh, with those bits of software that allow you to stream to a quest, like do it. It's it's a totally playable. Like you can play first person shooters that way, and it works provided you've got the right like local area network with a uh, 5G Wi-Fi. If you don't, then go upgrade your router. Yeah, and I'm convinced. I, 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 sorry. I was just gonna say, are you guys worried at all though that this game might be too good? Because like being YouTubers and having to do videos and yeah. <laughs> like like these are the kind of games that make me nervous. Like Fallout 4 VR, Skyrim. This is the stuff that scares the daylights out of me. Because <laughs> like if I get lost in this game, like what's gonna happen? Who's gonna do my show? You know. Yeah, exactly. If if we never see you again after the fourteenth, we know we know where you'll be. I already know several other streamer buddies who do VR stuff, and they're like, right from the fifth, so from the fourteenth, I'm now a uh, No Man's Sky streamer, and I will from here on in be known as a No Man's Sky streamer. Like, 
I, sure I, I actually happen. take your point. Like, like it is a risk. And, and the funny thing is, there's a flip side to being a content creator uh, in VR, right? Because you're trapped to the kind of cycle of the life cycle of games coming out. And if you don't keep pace with that, you know, I'm no longer relevant. I'm still playing Skyrim six months later. I've, cer <laughs> I've certainly been there because I love that game and I still go back to it. But when you yeah. do it, it does feel a little bit like you're flogging a dead horse sometimes. <laughs> but you're doing it because you love the game and you want to like play more and enjoy the richness yeah. of that like beautiful world that they've created. So I hope yeah. it is that because that's a good kind of bad game. You know, I well, you know, after the factor, I don't think it can go that bad. Oh, this, this, this is exactly what I was going to say, because the hype around that game, again, was huge. And I'm just hoping that doesn't happen. So please, we'll all pray. We'll take a moment to pray, please. Um, Otherwise, we have to make a video about the hour's dead. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know what? Even when No Man's Sky, like, people were, like, saying it sucked, like, way back in the beginning. Yeah. They were like, yeah, I've put 50 hours in it, but it sucks. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they do that. Yeah, it's so weird, right? No, but I, I do think even even if it's not working completely, I'm sure with the community, they are going to update it. Sure, yeah. um, so it's not going to be, like, completely smooth. I'm sure it's not going to – there's something that is going to happen. But in the end, it will be, you know, yeah. fixed. I, yeah, I like the chat I comment hope. here from uh, the Mad Hatter. He's relabeled the game No Man's Life. <laughs> yeah, <it's pretty> <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, wow. for sure. So, yeah, that is uh, on sale right now, coming out next week. So, uh, yeah, get hyped yeah. for that. This guy called uh, Mike, you know, right now. Exactly. Create, creator code. I, I, I want to put another, <laughs> I got to put a caveat in there just as you transition, <laughs> Mike, to say, like I said it last week, right? When servers get hammered, Things stop working well. Some part of their technology chain pops and doesn't work properly, whatever. They spend a couple days fixing it. Like, if it's not working day one, please don't go to Reddit just screaming bloody murder. Um, give it a little bit of time because nobody can scale <laughs> <laughs> reasonably their network infrastructure to, to deal with that kind of a, of a spike after this kind of hype. So yeah. just be ready for a bumpy ride the first couple of days is what I would say. Yeah, good point, good point. <laughs> So next bit of news this week isn't so happy, I'm afraid. We had some sad news this week that the team at VReal are closing down. Now, for those of you that don't know what VReal is, uh, it was a really interesting platform. Uh, it was striving to be new and exciting and different. And it was basically a new and unique way to watch VR content, Let's Plays and live streams. And it was kind of aiming to be like the Twitch and YouTube of VR content, right? Yep. So as a VR content creator, it allowed you to go into the game, record your gameplay using like an avatar of your choice, and you could play the game as you would doing in mm. narration or whatever. And then as a viewer, you could jump into that gameplay session uh, after the fact it's been recorded or live, and then you could watch that and move around freely mm. the game environment that the player is in. So like in, in Gorn or in like a Surgeon Simulator, you could move around the player and watch them from different angles. You could take selfies yeah. with the Let's Player uh, all while they're playing the game uh, in real time or after the fact, which was really neat. Um, completely unique. And they just unfortunately couldn't make the business element of that work. Um, too unique for their, uh, for their time, you would say way way ahead of their time yeah the, absolutely the, the, the inherent problem and i used to talk to vreal about this firstly i am sad they're gone i always hoped that they would kind of manage even with all the cash injection that they got a lot of people thought that that was going to just save them it doesn't generally in business the inherent problem you have by design when they first landed which i think was 2015 um when vreal came out is you're taking the equivalent parameter of vr in the world right which is a niche and then you're going, we're going to make a niche of a niche to take that tiny little sliver and try to make a business work off of the back of that. Because the concept is a solid concept. And I think mm -hmm. 10 years from now, it'll probably be a mainstay thing where you can say, I'm going to go to a Cher concert and I'm actually going to go sit on stage and I'm just going to chill with Cher and she's going to be sitting there singing away and they're going to have her 3D mapped. Okay, maybe she's going to be dead by then. But anyway, I could pick a younger artist. Sorry, Cher fans. Oh, wow. um, but, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, that kind of engagement and immersion, we've seen it in a few places, like the way VR saw that with Image and Heap, seen it in, in a few other different places, and it, it is the way forward, and I am convinced of it. Trouble is, even Twitch can't do VR proper, so, um, you know, unfortunately, there's just not enough uh, meat there on the bone for them to chew on. Yeah, so, no, I totally agree. Totally agree. Go on, go on, Anthony. 
I was just going to say, you almost need a platform holder that does what they're trying to do here so exactly. that it would be baked in every single mm -hmm. game. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. one thing, one thing I've always wanted with VR, and I can't believe we still don't have it, is like, okay, so you've got trailers for games, right? Where's the VR trailers? Mm -hmm. Like, where's the VR trailers where I could go in, in my headset, in VR, and like somebody's playing Autica? You know, and, and you could stand like five feet behind them and you're just watching them play Autica. It kind of sounds very similar to what you're talking about here. Mm. Mm. And they got like an, an, they got like 11 million uh, cash infusion. I think it was like February of 2018, which yep. is kind of weird considering VR had already kind of the bubble had already kind of slightly burst by then. You know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. They got a huge investment, mm. but um, they were based in Seattle. Uh, but sadly, the, the huge investment just wasn't enough to keep them afloat. But they kind of said um, in their final blog post, they stated it was an ambitious idea, which I totally agree it was. Um, the VR market never developed as quickly as we all hoped, and we were definitely ahead of our time. As a result, VReal is shutting down operations, and our wonderful team are moving on to other opportunities. Yeah. And I think that they're, they're spot on. They they were well ahead of their time. And and like Zim said, I think this kind of um, way of consuming uh, VR content from VR content creators on like YouTube or, or Twitch will be on this new platform where yeah. you can sort of get involved. But we're talking like ten years down the line. I think, like you say, yeah, we're a long way it, it away. It could be quicker. Yeah. I, like I really like Anthony's uh, point there, and it's something that I've echoed in the past, which is if somebody like an Oculus, right, um, was to have this technology and it was a just plug and play API, mm -hmm. that would make this work. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm actually surprised that they haven't picked this kind of thing up. And the reason I say that because Facebook, like many companies in today's world, is data hungry for data, and they kind of data that you can pick up about people's interests, body language while they're in VR, all that kind of stuff responding to ads, I thought would have been a seller. So maybe mm -hmm. they just said, we get the concept, let VReal blow up instead of eating them, you know, via an acquisition, and then make you, make their own thing. So maybe yeah. we'll still hear something in this space. I would not be surprised. It's, if not, it's not like this is completely gone. They have a lot of data and they learned a lot from this too. It's not like, you know, you're, you're, you're like the, the money is gone or whatever it is. In the end, you did learn a lot. Mm -hmm. There's a lot you can learn from, from an app like this. And I like, I like the concept. I also enjoyed the Foo show because it did the same thing where you could, you know, oh, be in great. that uh, tower and just uh, enjoy a conversation. Yeah. Um, but the thing that I thought was sad was that almost no YouTuber even picked it up because this was really driven by the community as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like every every platform in the end. Uh, and this one didn't get picked up by, you know, YouTubers at all. I, I told them that what I wanted with For Real was that it would kind of work with YouTube where I didn't have to uh, tell people like, listen, you need to go and download this app to then watch me do this. Now I wanted to be like YouTube, click button, bam, 360. Now you're in there with yeah, me. YouTube I wanted integration. them to have like a 360. That's what I told them. Yeah. And that's something they, they that was like, of course, complicated. But yeah. it's like the more steps you add, the harder it becomes, especially if it's community driven like that. Yeah, I certainly did try. Like I, I did uh, some video content around it on my channel. I know Kaz and Cherry used it a fair amount as well. Right. Yeah. But I just don't. I just don't think it, it gained the traction because, like Zim said, it is a niche within a niche. But I think uh, what Anthony said is is a great idea. Like say, because like if you if you go on Steam right now and you look at a game that you're interested in. It will show you now. It'll pop up a broadcast of someone playing it live. Yeah. Like, well, I can get a good idea of what this game is like if I just watch a few minutes of someone playing it live. And if they had the same with the Oculus Store, for example, yeah. oh, this is someone that's, that's, that's sharing it live. Let's well, watch it in VR. Yeah. Well, that's what right. Oculus Share had. That's what Oculus Share had. You as a creator, everyone could just you know send in their video. Then Oculus would approve it, and you would be next to the game. They should do the same. Where or they just select a few YouTubers or they let them send them videos because it sells copies. Mm. Part of the success of a game is because like influencers show off the game. Some people only buy games after they watched someone play the game. When I buy a game, I always look up some gameplay to see what it is, what it's all about. Did you guys ever try uh, Runes VR had a oh. playable trailer? Did you try that? It really was a demo, but it was like a demo with like, events that would happen and it was slightly playable and i thought actually not a bad idea you know decent idea 
No? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, demos uh, demos are always like helping people to get over that line to buy a game. Playable you're trailer saying, sounds you, neat, though. Yeah, so, exactly. so like, what were the interactive elements to that, Anthony? Well, it, it it was like a trailer. So like you would load it up and it would start doing a trailer type of thing, but then it would allow you, like it would get to a certain point where you could kind of walk through this castle. And so it was like, they called it an interactive trailer. It was more, really it was more of a demo that had very specific cinematic elements and then it would let you yeah. interact a little bit and then it would go back to cinematic elements. I still think it's better than nothing though. Mm. Mm. Like like an on rails demo where it kind of leads you to, the way and uh, yeah. Yeah, interesting, interesting. But yeah, it's, it's, it's sad to see them uh, go by the wayside and I just kind of wanted to say, uh, you know, I wish the team well in whatever they do next. I'm sure they'll be involved in something VR, so I'm sure we'll bump into yeah. them again in the future. But it is a, a shame to hear uh, someone like that. Just a comment about um, developers who come out of a VR studio that's gone bust. The general path that I've seen is that they first hop to something that's not VR because they kind of had their legs shaken a little bit by that. You know, it's, it's more common I've seen people who come from a busted up, you know, VR dev studio or similar from that fallout and go to something more traditional then as kind of like a, a bounce back. But I have seen those people boomerang mm. back then in, in via another studio. Oh. So I, although, hope, I hope they do. Although v- uh, Vireal is like within the Seattle VR community, they're like very close. So I think mm-hmm. they, they will, uh, you know, be on the right spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, next to Valve. Um, <laughs> Mike, Mike knows. Mike knows what he wants to do next. <laughs> it Valve kind of leads, it leads us on nicely, actually, because um, the next bit of quick news is about Apple because they're hiring for VR and AR uh, mm. uh, in the space. You know, the video we're actually going to be showing you very shortly. It's a, it's a mock-up of, a, of, of an AR product. It's not a real one, by the way. Before you get like super hyped, you totally um, super hyped me pre the stream with this. I was like, Jesus, I, I it's know. out. I know. This was a, like a, a rendered mock-up created by Concepts iPhone. So credit to them uh, for this video that we're showing you with their sort of mock-up of what they're calling the Apple Lens, which I think is a cool name, actually. Um, but this whole story, it was originally reported on by Road to VR, who linked to the job postings from Apple. Uh, but basically, it transpires that Apple are looking for AR and VR graphics system and software engineers. They're looking for AR and VR software tools developers uh, and product managers. And interestingly, an AR and VR demo evangelist. So if you know anyone. That's a demo evangelist then. Well, it's someone that uh, it needs to be capable with their communication skills and that are competent in demoing uh, AR or VR tech to an audience. So you think, well, that's cool. I'm, Sure, there's a few people that we know that we could probably uh, do this job. That's a very good point. Um, but you know what? If you if you read into it further, they're talking about someone that can be an evangelist inside Apple that would then go to the other teams in Apple and kind of like Correct. them up about VR and AR. At first, I was thinking it was what you're thinking, like an outside evangelist that is like spreading the oh, word. Very specific. Is that <laughs> internal? Um, wow. So that's one of the job posts as well. Uh, but then you need to be based in California, obviously, for uh, for you to apply for this job. I, um, I, hear, I hear a bit of disappointment there. It's <laughs> like you you were like you were the chosen one. You felt like the me for this job. Yes. No, no, no. I wouldn't want to do no? this job. I'm happy okay. with the job that I've got. Okay. <laughs> no, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to work in California. I wouldn't want to. Do, I don't think I want to do that. You job, know, the though. recruiter at Apple right now is like, ah. Oh. Yeah, oh. yeah, big sigh in, in the Apple campus. We uh, wanted sorry. Mike. He looked like Ivy. Yeah, you could sorry just brought him right in. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Um, but these job in, uh, listings, they could indicate that Apple are ready to sort of push forwards towards an actual product because we know that Apple have been working on AR and VR tech behind the scenes for years now. There's always been rumors about it. It's been hinted at many, many times before. But we're having having sort of wanting to recruit a product manager and everything else kind of seems like we might be moving closer to something actually being a tangible product. Um, because recently, I think it was like last year when Apple released their AR kit, we talked about it on the show because yep. they had this amazing demo with Lego. Mm. And if you missed it, basically it was like a, a Lego set, which was like a house. And then you could build that house in real Legos and then use your phone in augmented reality mode. And then that would sort of bring a city 
to life around yeah. your Lego building with cars moving around, mm. people moving around. And then if you looked inside the house, it would sort of like bring elements of the house to life as well, like TVs and cats and all and sorts of crazy stuff. multiplayer too. Like someone else could join and play Legos with you. You could really exactly. bring Lego to life like you did when you were a kid. Yeah, and, and this really shows the magic of what AR can do. And the yeah. same with like Minecraft, you know, they're just about to release Minecraft Earth where you can build and place virtual objects in a position in the real world that other people can view and play around with as well, which is incredible. Mm. But the problem we have right now, of course, with all this tech, it sounds amazing, is the limitation of the hardware because we've just got this phone, right? You're looking through this tiny little window into this amazing world. And the natural evolution is, of course, AR glasses where the augmented real, you know, world is projected over your yeah. real world in yeah. a natural way. But, yeah. but what about Rowdy? <laughs> what, what about him? Well, you know, what he thinks about Apple, right? Well, that's, that's right. You know, he's going to be left out by the wayside with his little, um, what is it, Samsung Galaxy. Yeah, <laughs> he's a big he's a big Android fan and won't touch Apple products. So. Actually, lads, I think I've been on the top uh, top part of this grid for too long. I am thinking of switching from Apple in my next jump, Ooh. going to a One Plus. I think I like their Seven Pro. It looks very tempting, and to break out of but to break out of the. Um, uh, the environment is going to be very difficult, I think. Um, yeah, it is, and they're making it harder and harder, even more so really now with are. the uh, the Apple credit card that they're launching now. Like, basically, <laughs> switch your phone, you won't ever be able to use your credit or, card anymore. No, or seriously. Fact, plus, you can be a poop emoji, and you can't beat it on the OnePlus. So for me, you know, I'm going to stay for the emojis for now. Um, no, but honestly, price definitely drives me to other places because Apple is crazy expensive. For what you and get. When I see other phones, I'm like, well, these phones are fine too. But it's just the software that I really enjoy. Um, yeah. But I'm not going to get too deep into this before I get attacked by people. But the yeah, AT, yeah. like the AT2020 <laughs> that they were talking about, this headset that was rumored to be like, I think it was eight or 16K in each eye. I think it was 8K in each eye, uh, which was supposed to drop in 2020. I still think that's going to be a, a, a megalodon on the horizon and just swallow up some of the competition. I mean, they did yeah. it with the iPhone. Whether or yeah. not the, the big the big pivot point in question in my mind is, did Steve Jobs' death lead to internal like this Delta problem where people can't make a decision properly? I mean, mm. Cook's a great you know leader for the for the ship, but um, sometimes if that vision goes. You know, it's a major, it's a gravity. It's it's a mm. major pull. And I'm a little concerned that maybe they went off the wrong track seeing, for instance, the, what, 11 different iPhones you can get now? Like, I mean, I, I feel like the clarity <laughs> of, of product design uh, has been watered down. Much, so yeah, let's true. see, it could keep me, it could keep me in uh, Apple territory. So I'm not a quick mover. Well, I If I had to pick a different phone, I would or go for a Google Pixel Mm -hmm. and the red the red phone not because red but just because i want to have a phone with a really di like big camera on it like a nice you know yeah. solid camera it's just so convenient <laughs> if you're a creator yeah. to have it yeah. Yeah. Well, i think uh, you know apple really are one of the few companies out there that can make um like wearable technology fashionable you know it's it, very few companies can pull that off you know like with the, <laughs> the, with the apple watch classy right? classy microsoft <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not classy <laughs> But with the, with the AirPods and the Apple Watch, they're just such um, nice looking products and they're fashionable products. And I think, you know, hopefully Apple can do the same with some AR glasses that make them look yeah. cool, make them look fashionable and make them, you know, people want to buy it. Um, but it, again, like they're one of these huge companies that I think if they just dip their toe into to AR and VR, well, like specifically VR, it could really turn the industry around on its head. Mm. Uh, same with Google, if some, if yeah. they did something as well. But this, this sounds exactly the job Mike should get inside Apple. I think Tim Cook, <laughs> Tim Apple, as they call him as well, uh, would pay you a lot of money, you know, to do that. Like what you just told me, like I was like, wow. He hates he knows. AR and VR. Yeah, yeah he's but, not. He's not convinced at all. No, so, they'd have to pay know, me a lot of money. So if you're listening, Tim Cook. But it's weird. Like they they work on this, but then the top like leader, the CEO, uh, I don't know what his exact job is at the moment. But if he doesn't support it, then what what is going on? It doesn't. Hmm. They just had one of their major people assigned 
uh, to the AR slash VR division. And she, I forget, her last name is Vorath. I don't know if it was like Susan or something like that, but mm -hmm. she got switched over to the AR VR division. And she's like a no nonsense, like, let's get this thing done. She doesn't tolerate missed deadlines, all this other stuff. But you know what's weird about this? Like when you think about VR and Apple, could you ever, I mean, I don't know if I could imagine a VR product by Apple. That just, because what Mike was yeah. talking about, they are all about the image. They're all about the look. They're all about, Correct. you gotta be able to go into a Starbucks wearing whatever it is. Even that little video that you guys were showing where it was kind of like this, um, idea of what it might look like it still had like there were glasses right and then there was like another plane of glass that's in there kind of like magically pololens where they have like Correct. those two planes mm -hmm. and that's not going to fly in public it's never going to fly in public that you're walking because you see somebody in a grocery store they're wearing that with two different glass planes you're thinking what the hell is this guy doing it's got to be we got to get to in real kind of like in, the in real glasses, but even in real, it's like half of it has this weird stuff. And then the other half, we're, I think we're a long ways away. And, and I think Apple, they were working on a product for like 2020 or 2021. Yeah. And the rumor is that that particular product was canceled. Now, I don't think it means they're not gonna do AR. Of course they're gonna do AR, but I think it was kind of like a Brendan Areeb kind of a thing where they had a project going and it's like cancel start over do a new one mm -hmm. i think uh, it's going to be like 2024 or something by the time we get this i would love it if it was a hybrid device that did both you know that was an ar capable device but then could like somehow black out and provide an immersive experience like that a vr headset could provide i think that would be super interesting okay uh, let's uh, hop into our deloreans and find out <laughs> yeah but that, that is that is one of the things <laughs> Whoa, you know, we're going maybe, deep if you're you know if you're in that space and you're interested you live in california maybe you can apply for some of these jobs and then you could link all leak all the information to us <laughs> <laughs> um, but let's quickly uh move on because we're getting on a bit um yeah. and let's Long news. We Longest should, quick news section it. ever. Yeah, why, why don't we just rename it to long news? We should. We should. We should. We should. I'm just going to call it news from now on because it's never short, news. never quick news anymore. <laughs> um, so I was going to talk about this, but I think we should maybe save it. Um, yeah, save it. We are running a bit. So Go for it. We were going to talk about Valve. It was more of me just ranting more than anything else about why. How about uh, we all take a vow of silence and you rant for two minutes, or do you really want to save it? I, I just I just wanted to I, say I, that. I want to see I want to see my grand thing. Yeah, so I was just gonna say that you know I bought an index. I really like the hardware. I think it's a solid uh, headset. The audio is phenomenal. The the visuals are a slight upgrade. Controllers are good. Bit of an issue with the thumbstick, but I don't have a problem with that personally. Um, it works. But what I'm really disappointed about is the lack of game content. Bam. That, that is it. That is Bam. all I was gonna say. I was gonna rant about it. I was gonna say that all we have right now is Aperture Hand Labs and the Vertigo 2 demo, where the heck is everything else? Where the heck is the rest? I, I why, totally agree. Why would you release a headset without any games <laughs> is the question. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. Why didn't they just wait is, is my big question, because for me, if you were going to release any hardware in this day and age in the gaming sphere, you release it with some solid first party content. Nintendo do it, PlayStation do it, Xbox do it, everyone does it, Oculus does it. Why hasn't Valve done it? And I just want to know where the heck are these Valve games, because I want to play them. So that's my rant. <laughs> well, I, I I agree. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's my little rant. Let's move on to uh, Zig <laughs> with his game releases for this week. What we should be looking forward to next week. Um, we know them all already because Anthony told us. Yeah, the exactly. You got a preview. <laughs> well, at, le at least some people haven't heard that yet. And yeah, they you might have missed that bit. So. Haven't haven't had their cherries popped. So. Anyway, I know we're running short on time, so I will keep this brief, um, and we'll uh, we'll run run on through. First game, Red Matter. Uh, this is coming to Quest. Um, now, every title on uh, my list this week is landing on the fifteenth of August. So I don't know. You know, we said this earlier. Why these are all landing on the same day, uh, all on the same platform? These are all Quest titles. Seems a little bit odd, um, but I guess if you own a Quest, hey, it's Christmas, and uh, you can play a whole bunch of games. We get sick of one, or your device isn't charging because you've uh, already played a game, then you can move to the next. So this is um, it's a story-driven 
VR puzzle adventure game. Um, I like it because it's you know it's it's high tech and you got those transforming claws and again that he described a little bit earlier to grab and hold. We were kind of going on about them last week. How Mike and I really like them. I think everybody likes them actually. Mm -hmm. And um, you know this game gave me really distinct kind of ominous Half Life Two impressions. Uh, it was kind of the first thing that really felt like had that level of like puzzle in the level design. The the environment is a little bit eerie. Um, and that ambience and the detail they have in their environments makes it a great game. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad it's coming to Quest. I think Quest Owners is a perfect title. The fact that they were able to bring it and keep it looking great, also fantastic. So um, from, from my perspective, it's uh, certainly one of the games that you should be consider playing. And for 15 quid, fair price. Wait, that's Definitely. the price, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's pounds, by the way. So it'll be $20, yeah. I think. Or eighteen dollars or something great. like that. I think, it's about, I think it's about five hours long, from what I remember. Yeah, but for that price, for that game, totally fair. Oh yeah, totally worth it. Way, yeah. way worth it. Yeah. yeah. Must buy. Must yeah. buy if you've never played it. And um, <laughs> the tagline I wanted to say before talking about any games this week, I forgot about it. I said, "And here's a list of all the games that No Man's Sky players won't be playing this week." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're they're yeah, all exactly. watching the day after we get our hands on No Man's Sky. That said. Harkening back to what I said, right? When the No Man's Sky servers are down and you're like chomping at the bit to play something, these are the games that you're gonna play. So maybe it was just like ingenious that they picked the day after when everyone's, you know, over on Reddit complaining about <laughs> the, various, <laughs> the various releases. Uh, yes. Uh, right, so uh, next one, Time Stall. This is what Nathan was talking about earlier. So if you wanted to look at it, for those of you watching the gorgeous uh, four gentlemen uh, in the corners of the you know, spiffy trailer um, on the video edition of the podcast, and you get to see what, oh, that's a horrible meal on that ship. Uh, the Fantastic Leap is a uh, is a crowdfunded luxury escape cruise, and that's the setting for this, uh, this game. Um, Earth is doomed. You have this lovely uh, slowdown mechanic called uh, Time Stall, and essentially, you've got to save the crew. Um, and so you do that through this kind of I'll call it bullet time that uh, Nathy described earlier. I didn't catch, and I, I will repeat, that it's kind of a room scale experience. That's very exciting. So somebody mm. like with Anthony's gargantuan dungeon of a cave behind him will really enjoy a game like this. <laughs> uh, it looks like great visuals, nice horseplay. Nathy mentioned positive um, feedback about the story and the characters you get to meet in the game. So to me, this one looks like a winner, and at £10.99, that is a bargain. So, um, yeah, I guess, Nathan, you're the best one to talk about this. Anything else you wanted to mention to those who might uh, consider picking this one up? To infinity and beyond. <laughs> I wondered why you bought an astronaut suit, and now I know it's for Halloween. You're going to go as Buzz. Yes, like you. Like you, thank you. I was like, <laughs> Buzz Armstrong is the actual guy. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> All right, so that's that. That's, uh, that's Time Stall. And that's an Oculus Quest as well. Third game on Oculus Quest. And, um, yeah, <laughs> Anthony even got the order. I don't know how he did it. Yeah, anyone, <laughs> just rewind to that section oh and just hear Anthony. Serious? He got the order as well. I don't know how he did it. It's, we're clearly looking at the same sources or something. But I, I actually scour, I source all the different, even game, uh, Go games and, and stuff like that. Like, there was, I was surprised there was nothing on PlayStation this week. Um, it was just all Oculus Quest. So, Dude, I, I do a show every day. I got to come up with something, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's it's the best place to be put in, but still. No, it's very funny. Um, it's very funny to be like, what are you going to do for the next six days? Well, this isn't out yet, huh? huh? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Pinball FX2 VR, which oh. is a game we've seen around for years. Uh, it's launched on a couple of different headsets. Now coming to Quest for, again, uh, £10.99. So that's a, it's probably going to be like $14. Um, Zen Studios, again, 15th of August. Pinball game. You can guess what a pinball game is. You play pinball. It's got a lot of very lovely tables. I actually wonder if some of the content tables that they had released on Rift are going to come because some are like thematic for various um, movies and things like that. It's not just like generic themed shark mm -hmm. film table and stuff like that. Like, there were some specific, I think it was Star Wars themed tables that came in as DLC. 
uh, was one of the first titles actually to bring DLC. So I wonder how that aspect is going to work on this. I don't mm -hmm. have many details on that. But what I did want to do was uh, pick up one of the people who had dropped a lovely review on Oculus Home and kind of repeat, echo their comments because I thought they were really, really nice. So Terry Tiger. Uh, had the had said he said ah oh, it makes me feel young again he says I'm 65 so pinball was a big part of my life as a young lad pinball in those days was video gaming before video gaming a chance to get lost in one's thoughts and do something fun this is a go-to uh, pinball game he said it's one of the best in my opinion the graphics are superb the play is smooth and reactive just like a real pinball machine I would say that the clacks for instance when you're moving the uh, the bumpers felt really good in the game, and even like wearing subpack and stuff, I tested it that way. Not the Quest version, the Rift version I'm talking to in terms of my personal experience, but it sound, it, it felt really good. So for yeah. 11 quid, again, when you're there going, like yeah. you're pent up so angry that No Man's Sky just isn't fucking working, you maybe just go and, yeah. you know, go on and, tilt and, with, the, and, with the tilt machine of pinball. And you don't need any spare change. I think like one round of pinball was like, I don't know, like 50 cents maybe? Yeah, 25 cents or 50 cents, exactly what, you and know, a real one. In VR, like the whole environment comes to life as well while you're playing it. So it's not just you in front of the pinball machine. Yes. It's like stuff happens when you hit you know, I think we call that 4D. Like, I know it's all in pretty much the yeah, VR environment, much. but it's kind of uh, maybe 3.5D. It's when, like when you feel feel real. It's 4D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, can, you can smell the metal off of the balls. But as, you, as you said that the review yeah. was Terry the Tiger, I'm, I'm surprised that his review wasn't just "It's great." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's Tony the Tiger, that, sorry. That's Tony, yeah, yeah. Different yeah. guy. His brother, Terry. Someone's still going to do that now. He's going to go in the store. <laughs> so uh, we have two others. One's a main, so uh, Dirt Rally 2 we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, that got a uh, patch, a content patch on uh, on the 8th of August and allows now VR play. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Mm -hmm. And one that is like MIA in my list, and I wonder if maybe Anthony has anything or if you guys have any um, tips because you've played this. Aspire 1 is supposed to launch this month. Um, anything that you know publicly? <laughs> I say that because you're probably in touch with the devs, but I, it's uh, supposed to launch sometime this month, and I, there's no dates yeah. out there that I can see. No, you, you're right, you're right. It was supposed to launch this month. Uh, I haven't heard anything personally, um, but I do remember actually saying that it was going to launch sometime in August, um, but I can't remember exactly when the date is. Maybe I'll have a quick look uh, and see yeah. if I can find out in the interim. Find what about you, Anthony? Anything about Aspire? Yeah. I was, did did I was you hear anything about Aspire? Are you asking Nathy? Uh, you, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I've, I've always heard this August thing, and on the Oculus Quest subreddit, everybody's saying eSpire 1 on the Quest, August, August, August. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute. I, I know I heard Nathy talk about this on F Reality yeah. after being at E3, yeah. and I remember him saying that it's on the Quest too, but that one's lagging a bit further behind. So I yeah. don't know I, that. Yeah. 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 I, I, <laughs> Hmm. Yeah. Honestly, I honestly, I, I honestly, I don't see a release of the Quest happening this August. I feel so, like they need some more time for that. But the PC one. That's what I meant. PC to be one is that very yeah. solid. But yeah, yeah I don't know. On Steam right now, it just says August. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I do so expect it to go online in August. Yeah. I do like yeah. to use this as my forum to kind of give devs who are listening a yeah. kick in the rear and say, tell us when you're coming out, because we like to care about this, and also we like to talk about it, so your you know, yeah. sales get a boost. If, if not, that's a good sign, because <laughs> these guys are really dedicated and want to make the best game possible. I think it's a great game, and it's really great. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Late well, August I'm... is getting kind of crowded. Late August, because you got that, um, isn't it, the Arizona Sunshine update? freaking until you fall there's a bunch of stuff there's right like now. yeah there's like 10 things coming late august it's it's mad so everyone coming back from their holidays and that have things to play um so that's that um so mike i suppose back to you in a way yes uh yeah i've got a bit to talk about before <laughs> i sort of pass it back to you cool, cool. Um, of course we're going to talk about uh dirt 2.0 um now it's not some crazy like sort of waifu simulator smutty <laughs> game being called dirt. <laughs> Uh, it's actually Dirt Rally 2.0, so don't get too excited. Uh, it's a sort of rally racing game, of course. Um, you know, the game originally released way back in sort of 26th of February this year. There was a huge backlash from the VR community around this game as they weren't offering any VR support at launch. Many stated this sort of <laughs> all started a crusade saying, no VR, no buy. Uh, and that's basically what people <laughs> were saying about this game. Um, because, of course, the original Dirt game did offer VR support, 
but it was exclusive to Oculus because Oculus clearly paid for the VR development. Codemasters implemented the game, you know, the VR uh, into the game after that sort of deal. But that meant that other users with other headsets had to use like Revive yeah. to play the Oculus version because that was the only version available. Um, it's also worth noting though that the original Dirt was also available on PSVR, and I think it still stands as one of the best racing games on PSVR right yeah. now. I'll stamp that with a uh, Zim stamp of approval on that comment. Yeah. So, although it was hinted at that Oculus were again going to fund the VR development of Dirt 2.0, we didn't get any indication as to when the game was going to launch. Um, and it's surprising, really, because the game just dropped out of the blue this week on both the Oculus Store and Steam. And I'm kind of surprised that because it's kind of hinted at that Oculus funded this VR implementation again, yeah. that it's not just exclusive to Oculus again. I think it's great that it's on Steam as well, but I'm just surprised that that's the way it went. Um, mm. But let's pass it to you, Zim, because you've actually got to play it, and then I can talk a bit more about some other things that the community are upset about right now, because it hasn't exactly been a smooth launch, yeah. uh, which is why I'm surprised it just launched out of the blue. Like, why didn't they just iron this stuff out, then get the community hyped with a, a date, and then launch it? Yeah. Seems strange. But yeah. what's your hands-on experience like uh, being a sort of VR racing enthusiast? I mean, the solid, the game itself, and I'll run a little bit of the the game um, as, we're, as we're talking. The game is a solid, like the, the core component of it, which is do I get to race around a track in VR? Do I have a full car? You know, last time we got that the ass half of the car was not modeled. So... <laughs> You look back and you're like, "Whoa, this is like, this is interesting." You can see on the back side of the car, <laughs> a little bit dangerous, you know. If you're gonna rally, usually you do it with four wheels, not just two. Um, but this time, you get the full model of the vehicle. Um, I mean, the the number one thing that stands out to me is that it, it again, it, it feels like um, a, a kind of a minimum spec bolt-on of VR, and that's the biggest problem, especially for something that's got Oculus's stamp on it. I'm surprised this passed their quality meter for OK. Um, and I wonder if it was some part of that deal, like you said, Mike, because it hit Steam as well, where they're saying, like, OK, but we want to launch on Steam. And like, fine, we'll fund you to this tune. Um, and then somehow they came to an agreement as to when it would drop. Now, there was there was hints uh, running up to the content patch in, in August. And I guessed rightly, thankfully, uh, that this was going to drop. So I was kind of primed and ready for it. Um, and I was glad it did drop when it did, because it was ahead of No Man's Sky and a few other things. But like, the, my, my first introduction to the game was, you start up, and just like with Dirt 1, you start up with a, a menu just hovering in front of you, a boxed menu. It's not VR at all. It's just like what you would do if you had Steam kicking in that, that is mode. It, isn't that the same with Project Cars as well? Where Actually, it's just like every this racing menu? game right now. <laughs> every, every racing like game. Every racing game right now, you're not getting, and, and to be fair, I haven't played Dirt 1 on PSVR, um, I don't know if they had specific menus. I don't believe they did. I don't know what the problem is. None of them even have a basic VR menu, which I which driver, I like. Driver did. The driver game on the, the PlayStation. It was the only one I remember that mm -hmm. had a 3D menu. Like like that like so that's that's first kind of gripe. The second gripe I met was firstly like the the menu was really bleached out. It was very odd. Um, this will this will kind of copy to the the 2D version of the game. Um, the actual menus themselves were less clear in terms of what did what across the two. So you had like two different panels, one of which was called My Team and one which is called Free Play. Under My Team you had like events and a few other bits and then under Free Play you had like historic and custom and a few other options. So the options were confusing, the menu was bleached out and you get in it and then, uh oh, it doesn't perform very well. Like the performance was, was, was absolutely acing my, my CPU while I was playing it. It was just about enough for stream to take it, but it wasn't like a super smooth experience like you want in VR to be immersed. And if any game really matters to have that precision of visual fidelity, a racing game needs that because you're focused on the apex. You're focused mm -hmm. about where, what's the minute motion I need when I can slip my back tires and get into that turn. So, I mean, all in all, it's not a bad racing game, but then factoring in the fact that the price is 45 quid, it's like, that's double what I want to pay. Cool. Mm -hmm. you know, if that. So my verdict on this game is it's not a bad core. You need to give the devs time to patch this stuff out. It is not a happy beginning. Okay. Um, and support um, has has certainly been a problem back and forth. So, you know, for someone who's using the Rift S on, on a 1080, um, 
you know, and I've got a 970 doing encoding in the background as well. So you know, it's not, it, it's a, it's a pretty load heavy game. And the weirdest part about it is that the best way to get it to run is actually to crank up the settings in the mm. menu, which I found bizarre. Uh, so you like, you crank MSAA and all that stuff up to like 8X and it runs smoother than it did if you had that off, which is odd. So there's a whole bunch of different things about the game characteristics that are just strange. But I have to say the core racing experience gave me a thrill. It was great fun to ride. And the things that I really liked about the game were the terrain. Like the terrain going uphill and downhill really felt at some stages gave you that little sense of vertigo like going at speed downhill when it's a proper downhill. So it was mm. more aggressive terrain than in the original Dirt, which I liked. Wow. I wonder uh, what this game looks like on a Pimax or a Valve Index with 144 hertz. Well, this this is the problem right, right now. Stutter. Uh, it doesn't sound like that's going to happen right now. But... No. Well, this is the thing, because like, initially when the game launched on Steam, uh, they listed support for Index and Vive. And then, so basically what happened was people with Rifts who had or maybe already bought the game because they were they knew that VR support was coming later down the line, they were excited about it, they just want to play it on their Pancake monitor first, get a feel for it, and then wait for VR support. They're locked out. They can't. They literally can't run this game on their Rift right now. Apparently, it runs like absolute garbage. The Steam version on a Rift. So, if you've got a Rift and you're interested in this game, I would wholeheartedly suggest you go and buy the Oculus version. Then, what happened was they removed the Val the the Valve Index support listed on the Steam site. So now it only shows that Vive is supported because apparently no. over at the over at the but, Index subreddit, yeah, but they have Vive supports. So the Index does the same. As long but, as we're not talking about controllers. The index people were saying they were having real troubles with this game. Yeah, so I don't know what the, what the issue is. Wait, wait, wait. So, so did, did anyone confirm with a Vive that it worked? I haven't been on the Vive I, subreddit. But, for but a I long think, time. <laughs> like, just, just from the basics, I think a Vive works the same as an index. It, it should do, yeah. But what they're saying over at the, the index subreddit is that it's just not running right. I, but, um, but, it's uh, the point that some people are trying to use Revive with the Oculus version with an correct. index. It's just confusing in general on Steam to have all these yeah. like, and I feel like almost every game I looked up, old games, are all supporting Valve Index. It's almost like they automatically just slapped all these new icons on every game they could find. Yeah, but it's um, obviously a problem because they wouldn't have oh, removed yeah. it from their support listing otherwise. No, of course, of course. Um, but it just seems again, like like Zim said, like that maybe they didn't spend enough time in QA with this, like with enough VR yeah. people actually trying this out because like, how can you just release it like in yeah. such a mess like this? I don't understand. So it's not, something, yeah, I was just gonna say, it's like, I, I probably wouldn't use the adjective a mess, but I would say it's certainly underperforming to the extent that it feels like people with even slightly on the fringe rigs are not gonna be able to run it. Right. Right. And I don't mean like, and then there's people who are medium and high tier in terms of their, CPU and graphics card, and I think they'll be able to play the game. But are they going to be happy that they they spent that much money on it? You know, okay, if, their, if their index supports dropped out, that's not good. That's not going to make you happy, bunny. And the second thing is uh, the performance. Like right now, it's not comf it's not a comfortable race. I still did three hours in it, but it's it's not comfortable. It's not where I want it to be. You know, I think I, I think like you know. Give this game, like you said, a few two more months. weeks. Yeah, two months even. Yeah, and I think it probably could be like the de facto, you know, rally game in VR. And I think people are going to be happy with it. But did you also say that the feed, the force feedback wasn't that strong? No, 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 no. So the force feedback was fine. Um, okay. It was fine. I, I I didn't have my uh, butt kicker set up, but I had the force feedback wheel. The G27 was acting fine. And actually, I have to give hats off to them. It detected my G27 at the configuration. I didn't have to do any customization that way. The That's wheel good. was fine. Yeah. What wasn't fine was I got into the game and I was like, okay, what do I control this with? And I tried an Xbox controller, which is normal for racing games to just like a console support. Didn't work. The uh, touch controllers didn't work. Keyboard and mouse didn't work. I was like really puzzled what was going on. So if you are having trouble with it, first off, the the game has to be in focus. Otherwise, it won't mm -hmm. respond to any control oh, whatsoever. Yep. So for those who are just getting into it, that's a simple uh, thing to avoid. And did um, you use the wheel in the end for all the menu inputs, or do you have to use an use Xbox the wheel. control? No, 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 oh, I, use, I use the wheel. So on, on the H shifter, for those who have it, it's got plenty of buttons and kind of a dial. It worked almost exactly like um, um, like Dirt 1. But like you were saying, de facto, it could be the de facto of, of, of racers. At the moment, for the money, I still think base a set of Corsa with some mods on it is the best deal for like eight quid or whatever that is. The second best, and for single player, for rally games, period, Dirt 1 is still, for me, would beat this. Uh, even if the performance was better, it would still beat this. 
And, and why do you think that? Out of interest. It, it, it's just something about the way it drives. It's the feel of the game, and that's really important in this. I mean, like Project Cars, people know I'm not a fan of Project Cars or Project Cars 2. The feel is a little bit arcadey. This is like, it's it doesn't have the same kind of punch or grit that Dirt 1 had. It is... It's like a halfway step between Dirt 1 and Project Cars. So if you preferred Project Cars, then this is probably going to be more for you than Dirt 1. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So Interesting. what if I have a PlayStation VR and I want to play this game? You're screwed. Oh, yeah. They, uh, they formally <laughs> announced it's not going to get support. Yeah, okay. it's not going to get PSVR support. And that's a real shame because the original game did. And it, and it is like, you know, the go-to game on PSVR. Um, but again, you know, it just needs the community to sort of Keep asking for pitch, it. Pitch yeah. fork, pitch forks up. Yeah, yeah, well, exactly. What about, the, what about the price though? Because it's like I've been doing VR games for so long and not touching anything flat that I've gotten accustomed to like yeah. eighteen ninety nine, twenty four ninety nine, twenty nine ninety nine. <laughs> and so if a game is like the full sixty dollar price here in the USA. It's like you better be the best game ever, and mm. I don't know. Is that wrong? But, but I think I think no, with, I with sim games in particular, because they're the kind of game that you you generally like. If you're a sim enthusiast, that's the game that you play over and over and over again. So you will get your value out of it. But like with what Zim's saying about this, it's kind of disappointing to hear. Yeah, I, <laughs> the thing that I would say is I have the same reaction. O over the last you know five years, I, I've definitely gotten into the mindset of like it's kind of like if you get used to. Uh, mobile phone games and it's like oh yeah everything's like you know a pound and then all of a sudden there's an app that's 9.99 and you're like jesus christ that's like a gazillion dollars i'm not paying that um which isn't necessarily true so if it was performing well i think it'd be worth it the trouble that developers have in this spot when you do the um, vr bolt-on if you don't do it like hellblade if you're buying the base 2d game right you gotta price it for that 2d market you can't like, they don't have a branch here that's like, buy the VR bolt-on, which I feel like would have been smarter in this case, because then they could have charged, I don't know, um, somehow segment that so that, like, you could get access to the VR bit, but not the the, the flat bit. Is that possible? So you're selling a VR one for 25 quid, but the, the main game for 45? I don't even know if that's supportable on the store. That, that's what we said with, with uh, uh, what is it, Ace Pilot? Ace Combat? What? Ace Combat, yeah, like the same thing. I was like, I just want to play the VR stuff, and yeah. I don't want the rest of the game. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 weird, but yeah, I like use him. I hope it gets patched out. I hope the game uh, improves. I'm sure it will. Um, but I'm looking forward to to breaking out the steering wheel again because it's been a while since I played a racing you'll, game. So you'll have fun, Mike. I think you'll have fun. Um, yeah. The one thing I would say, because you've got a good ring. Um, one one thing I will say is. Um, to launch, if you're going full manual, right, which I recommend, of course, uh, so eight shifter, full manual, all that, the the handbrake, which is sitting up in you, and it's like a giant black sausage, and you're like, you're like, how do I control the handbrake? It is the top right red button on your G29, G20, G27, top right button is your handbrake. You have to hold that down for two seconds, then it lets you drive off. Okay. It was That's infuriating. I was. Th this is the. This is the part that was the worst. Was the menu for some reason is zoomed out, like twenty feet, and so it's super tiny to the point that I can't even read the the numbers. It's like, is that an eighteen or a fourteen? You, yeah. It's literally. It's, it's way out there, and it was terrible for the viewers. But for me, it was like, if you don't have one of the modern headsets, if you've got an original Rift or a Vive, there's no fucking way you're reading that. Like, yeah. No way. This is, this is a really good tip. Hold the right red button. As the top right red button. That's it. Good tip. Good tip. Okay, so that is Dirt Rally 2.0, kind of a, a lukewarm launch, but hopefully they can patch it out, make it better. Um, so let's talk about the show. <laughs> let's talk about the show, <laughs> how it all started, because you know last week, as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, was our hundredth episode of the F Reality Podcast. So I thought we'd kind of go back uh, to the beginning, tell you how it all kind of started, and give you a bit of history about the show. Uh, like Nathie said, we did an alt space meetup after the hundredth episode last week. Uh, so we met up with uh, fans of the show, people that wanted to talk to us in VR in alt space uh, in a party bus environment, and it was really cool. Definitely something we're going to do more of in the future. So make sure you stay tuned for sort of future events where we do stuff like that. Because I think it was great to interact with you all. Um, but let's go back to the very first episode of the show. Now this this episode. It aired on the, on the 10th of September, 2017. So almost two years ago. I can't even believe that we've been doing this show for two years now. Um, but back then, 
it wasn't called the F Reality Podcast. It was called the VR Inside Podcast. And uh, and back then, it was actually hosted live on Nathie's YouTube channel. Like, <laughs> Nathie used to host it live on his own channel, and then I used to upload a video of the the vid- the, the, the stream on oh. my channel afterwards. Zim is showing it right now. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Super cringe. What happened to my hair? <laughs> what happened to Mike? What happened to I, everyone? Rowdy's got a proper beard, like... That's yeah, great. Rowdy's suited a beard. Like, I didn't have a beard. Like, I, I had, like, a shaving accident before, like, first episode, so I, I had... <laughs> you, you can see, if, 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 if you're tuning in right now on video, Mike has a play button on his wall of his, I think, like 10, 10 subs or something. Yeah, it was like, congratulations uh, for 10 subscribers. <laughs> I was super proud of that because I just started my channel back then. Um, so yeah, it's kind of crazy to see how, we, how we've how sort of grown over the last two years. Um, but back then, like the, the, the topics of the first episode, this is hilarious. We were talking about GTA 6 in VR. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about what we would like in a VR version of, of Grand Theft Auto. Um, we was also talking about like uh, Windows Mixed Reality headsets because they were sort of coming out back oh, then. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, L.A. Noir as well because we had just been teased that that was going to come out in the horizon. And the core sort of group back then was uh, me, Nathie, and Rowdy. And then we had uh, Austin, who was uh, also known as Prometheus. Prometheus. Uh, he was a sort of staple of the show. He had his own VR YouTube channel where he was doing a lot of content using the Vive. I th- think he even did like a crazy... 24-hour live stream with the Vive once, um, where it sort of like really irritated his face. I, I think I don't know if he did it for charity, but he did it. Mm. So that was kind of really impressive. But he ended up leaving the show uh, and and leaving YouTube altogether. Actually, yeah, yeah. He started like a, a, an important job. Uh, whatever he's doing now, if you're listening, uh, dude, we, we wish you the best of luck. Uh, it was great to have you on the beginning of the show. Um, but also back then. We had PSVR Frank on the show. <laughs> he was like a regular host of the show in the early days. And uh, funny story, like <laughs> we, we did like a pilot episode. So before the first episode went live, we did a pilot show, which was also live as a test on Nathie's channel. And uh, just kind of feeling out what the layout would be like. And, and, and Frank was on the show. And obviously because of the show times, it was really early for him. So he like, literally woke up straight out of bed, put his shirt and tie on and, and, and did the show. And his girlfriend kind of burst into the room halfway through the show and started swear, swearing at him, or his, his wife now, started swearing at him. And he was just like, sorry, guys, I've got to go, and just logged off straight away. <laughs> and it was just one of those really hilarious moments because it was live. Uh, yeah. you, couldn't, you couldn't control it. Yeah. Or, or there was also this one time where Prometheus, his internet wasn't great. And then this one moment he froze, but we didn't notice it. And then we asked him about what he thought about this game. And he was just like, like like this smiley face. Yeah, he was totally yeah. frozen. We captured it. It was so awesome. He looked like um, who's that guy? Uh, remember, remember the fifth of November, like the anonymous oh, mask. Oh, oh exactly. Or that guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. uh, guy Hawks, Fox. Guy, Fox? guy, guy, guy Fox. Yeah, exactly. That's what he looked like, and it was just like the perfect face to be yeah. frozen on. It was so yeah. awesome. So around that sort of time um, was my first trip to California to go to Oculus Connect. Uh, oh, I went, yeah. I went to OC4, and that's where I met Zim. Uh, for the first time in real life. We got to hang out quite a lot, get to know each other, never met each other before that. And uh, I was like, oh, this guy's gonna be, would be really good for the show. And and Frank, you know, bless his heart, I love the guy, but he was a bit flaky, a bit unreliable, wouldn't turn up sometimes. So we were like, okay, we'll substitute Frank for Zim. And I think, you know, we made a, a brilliant choice there. Um, Frank, you know, has is, is gone on to do really great things since then, you know, obviously he stopped yeah. doing his YouTube thing. Now he works for First Contact Entertainment the team behind the excellent Firewall Zero Hour. So if you ever hear of us referring to Uncle Frank, like PSVR Uncle Frank, Frank. Is, is who we're talking about, yeah. We've, <laughs> we've, we've seen him since many times, you know, at events and stuff like that. He's always a really yeah. chill dude. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he was there at the beginning, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but also back then, we used to have uh, developers on the show as guests. Yep. Um, and the reason why we stopped doing it was because it, they started to become a bit unpredictable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is, is basically the reason why. And some of them were great. Like, oh yeah, like Anthony from Cloudhead Games was uh, a really, totally. really nice guy, and he gave us loads of insights into like the design uh, behind um, the gallery uh, episodes one and two. Really interesting. Um, we had John, uh, I think his name was from Gunfire Games, around the release of uh, From Other Sons. Again, another great insight because they were the team behind the original Dead and Buried. Yep. And we also had like Nim Sony, who was like a you know really smaller developer, but was making some really sort of crazy, uh, edgy stuff. Um, and in the end, we kind of just settled that 
the four of us we knew what was going to happen so we could kind of just go with it and you know it, it was just easier without developers involved but we're thinking about doing it again so if you if you yeah. like the idea of developers being on the show let us know in the chat what you think and maybe we'll we'll experiment again maybe do something pre-recorded so it's not so crazy <laughs> or unpredictable <laughs> um, but then we kind of settled on the core group of course you know me zim rowdy and nathy and then it was like, okay, we know what we've got here. We know how each other works. We know our, our strengths and weaknesses, and we can play off each other. And it was a really good team dynamic. Uh, but we knew that we wanted to rebrand the show. <laughs> and then it was like, okay, we want to rebrand it, and we want to put it on its own channel. What do we call it? And this just took months. It just took months. Five months. Five months? But, but five not, months. Not, not, not months in a way where we didn't do anything, though. No, it was no, like, oh, you know solid. what? Uh, no, we like, we're constantly <laughs> trying to find a name. It's and, like two, and two this, hours a weekend we were doing it, and it was crazy. Yeah. It was just mental, just going through. I mean, we went through probably more than a hundred names. Yeah, here's, um, here's a couple. Of, here's like the two funniest ones. <laughs> oh god, here we go. <laughs> I, I know, know what's exactly, going. Yeah, I know exactly what's going to happen. So the first one is jacking in. <laughs> that was my contribution. Yep. <laughs> uh, you can imagine the fun we had with that name. And then this is, uh, I think you'll know who suggested this name, Rowdy and his bitches. <laughs> 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 that, is, uh, uh, that was a, that was a contribution from Rowdy. Wow. But we ended up, of course, settling on the name F Reality. Oh, great. People, people often ask us, like, you know, what does the F mean? Like, what does it stand for? And it's like, well, it can mean whatever you want it to mean. You know, face reality, fake reality. Uh -huh. uh, you know, whatever you want it to mean, it, it can mean. But we thought it was a kind of an edgy name, and then we kind of went with that edgy sort of vibe for the rest of the show. Yeah. Um, but also, like over the over the last couple of years, we've had some great guests. You know, we've had Cass and Cherry on the show. We've had Tyriel Wood, Voodoo De, of course, this show, Anthony being on the show, uh, which we really appreciate. So it's great to get other people from, you know, the VR creator scene to yeah. share their insights of the of the industry as well. And and also, we've done shows uh, whilst we've been traveling. So you know, Zim's been in America doing a poker v tournament yep. thing in VR and <sighs> live stream. Phil Helmuth, yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was really cool. And, you know, Nathy was in uh, California, uh, uh, Los yeah. Angeles at E3, and he, he did it from his, uh, his room there. And also while we've been together at events, uh, you know, when we the rare moment that the, the four of us meet up in real life, we've done podcasts live at show floors, uh, at the last Oculus Connect, and also PAX East in Boston as well. Uh, and I think, fingers crossed, if Rowdy can make it, we're going to do a, a one from, from Oculus Connect 6, the four of us together again. So that would yeah. be be really really cool so that's kind of a bit of like a history of of, of the show really it's kind of been a, a really wild adventure over the last two years and and doing a show like you know anthony will sh tell you sort of every weekend it's kind of uh, it sort of does eat into your you know your your your, your days off you know essentially because you're preparing for a show well, you want to be informed but i think you know ultimately I, we all really enjoy it oh yeah and i think we first had the show at like somewhere in the afternoon where we cut off like the entire day it's like sometimes i was at something important but then i was like oh i also need to catch up with the podcast so you constantly have to like run like crazy like there were moments where i almost missed the show but yeah. always timing it in a way where like the show needs to happen i need to join i think i missed two one where i went to this boxing match of Logan Paul and KSI. <laughs> Logan Paul thing, <laughs> Jesus. And then, and then there was this, uh, I think the last one was uh, Disneyland. Yeah. Because I was just yeah. having so much fun. And yeah. you guys just said like, you know, just just have fun and, and yeah. don't. I, I wanted to actually do the show even though it was at Disneyland, but then you guys are like, you know, it's fine. We just yeah. do the show. Yeah, exactly. But it's kind of interesting because at, at the very early days when we were just talking about the show, it was funny. And Nathan was like, oh, I really want to do a podcast, but I don't want to host it. You have to host it, Mike. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, like, I'd never done anything like this before in my life. So I kind of just kind of grew into the role, I guess. But um, yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun. And, and you know, Anthony, you probably know from doing a podcast of your own that, you know, it, it can be uh, really rewarding as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I was wondering, you guys do an audio version, right? That's on like iTunes and stuff like that. Yep. Do you, how is that doing? Because I, you always forget about that audience. And sometimes yeah. you could have thousands and thousands of people that never see the YouTube show 
but yeah. they listen at work or whatever. Yeah, exactly. And and it's crazy. And it's a really good point, actually, because the audio version does way better than any other medium, any other format that we do it in, uh, because of, it is a podcast after all. So it kind of lends itself to people just listening to it on their way to work or whilst they're walking around town or whilst they're traveling. So yeah, the audio version actually does super well. Um, yeah, so it's, it's kind of an interesting metric that, especially yeah. for people that have just followed the video version of the show for many years, yeah. maybe know that the audio version is actually doing really well. And we spend a lot of time actually making the audio version sound a lot better uh, yeah. for, for an audio listener. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What I also really enjoy is all these memes that have been just like building up. I have always like this, this bag of like memes that I can pull out where it's like, hey, let's talk about Halo Recruit or... Rowdy's saying that something is uh, rep repetitious. Uh, re re yeah, exactly, that yeah. one. Uh, yeah. so, so all these, you know, like feel real became a meme. There are so many <laughs> these weird things that you sometimes pull out and they be like, hey, do you still remember this? And I was like, yeah, 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 or Jumanji, you know, like Jumanji. Kind of yeah, I, I exactly. like when you when you fired off that fucking firecracker of confetti in your room. That was <laughs> that was brilliant. Yeah, like it's there's still confetti here. The look, still confetti I believe here. you. That was a lot of confetti. That was like yeah. a cannon in your room that just went off. <laughs> David was like he was just waiting there, and I was like I was like scared to death. I was like when are you gonna do it? And, and like we didn't really speak to each other how we were going to do it. And then he just and then I yeah, it's so great. Like I love that moment. I think that was the celebration of the first f reality uh, uh episode and yep. and i like vr insight was always a test in in, in a way where yep. it like the name was just a name it wasn't super like branded out yet and and now it is and and there are so many people we meet that say like hey uh, we watch the show um surprisingly enough people from the industry as well you know mm. from htc from facebook from google um all kinds of companies you would never expect um, and that's that's great. Even uh, at our um, you know party last week, uh, there was this one a guy who builds droids for the Star Wars movies, and he's a big fan of our show as well. And I'm yeah, like, wow, awesome. I never thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, it's a surprise. It's it's awesome. Yeah, and it's almost almost a year to the day today that we switched over and and had our own f reality youtube channel so it's been yeah. a year since we've been doing it on that channel if you're interested to check out the old episodes by the way of vr inside they're all still online yep. on my channel there is a, a, a vr inside podcast playlist on my channel so you can go and check out all the old shows some of them are super cringy but as we're sort of like you know feeling out yeah. our way uh, into what we've got now yeah. but uh, they were super fun so really i just kind of wanted to round up um by saying thank you really to everyone that's kind of helped support us over the years you know watch the watch the uh, the live streams now people are watching it in big screen tv which is completely mind-blowing uh, and the audio listeners as well so thank you very much for, for joining us um yeah. But if you've got any questions, now's a great time. You can ask us questions about what we've talked about in today's show, uh, the podcast, wherever you want to ask us. Now's a great time when I'll sort of recap uh, the show times. Yeah. So uh, just a reminder, it's a, a weekly VR, AR, and MR talk show, live streamed every Saturday on YouTube, Facebook, and on Twitch. You can catch the show in VR as well, which is uh, streamed live with other like-minded VR enthusiasts to big screen TV. The show goes live at 7 p.m. in Europe, 6 p.m. in the UK, and 12 midday in Central US. And the audio version is available on iTunes, SoundCloud, Anchor, and Spotify. Yeah, yeah. and we're on the front page of the Oculus app. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. And the PC version as well. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's oh, so and, cool. and leave a like as well. Uh -huh. Absolutely. And, 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 yes, all these and, things. And, 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 yeah. I don't know, it's just great. It's, um, uh, you know, it was, uh, it, it goes to show, you know, when you, when you get together with people who are uh, enthusiasts, like-minded people, like yourself, right? Get together and put the work in, you know, you can, you can do something special. And I really do think that, you know, even if, even if any one of us wasn't part of the show, we'd be listening to the show and, and contributing yeah. to it because it's it's that kind of thing. It's like a melting pot. And uh, like Mike said, I mean, if you're if you're if you're as busy as we are, um, you know, it's hard to make the time for it. We do make the time for it, but it's uh, it's a blast as well. I mean, there's yeah. there's pros and cons to anything, of course, but uh, you know, not having a Saturday sometimes is difficult. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but, but um and it's also worth it. mentioning you know i used to listen to the vr roundtable uh podcast a lot as well on my travels you know whenever i was whenever i was traveling i would listen back to our show just to kind of see if there's little bits that we can improve but i'd also listen to the the vr roundtable as well because uh you know you you guys always always had some interesting insights um 
and, and if you're interested, you should definitely go and check out Anthony's uh, channel, VR365, for the, the news every day. And I still like tip my hat to you that how you do that every day is, is incredible. Yeah, it's just show up and do it, man, you know. But you know what's what's great about a show like this for you guys especially, I think, is like you all have your own channels and you make content, but your content is designed in a, you know, your content's most likely designed to be kind of like appealing to everybody, right? And and maybe you don't get to be your your true true self as much, and then when you come on a show like this, you get to show a more more of your real personality probably gets to shine through, which is a nice bonus for people that love your content in general. They get to see another aspect of you. So that's always. Yeah, cool. that's a really good point. Yeah, because like you say, YouTube is kind of curated in a way. Um, so now you can just sort of be yourself and just be open and talk about the way you feel about things for sure. Yeah, that's a really good point. So someone in the chat is asking, how did Mike meet Nathy and Rowdy? Online dating website. <laughs> oh, um, so so basically, like um, I was I was starting out like doing a YouTube channel, like like Nathy said, I had like a ten subscriber plaque on my wall. I was doing it from my basement. Uh, it was just something that I was super passionate about because I love VR and I just wanted to share it. So I thought I'd do a, a channel, and then I was like. I think I was just like contacting Nathy about some bits and pieces and then we got talking and then we yeah. ended up sort of like building this relationship. I invited you to talk with me on like Skype or something because yeah. I thought you were interesting in a way content wise and also your personality I was like, oh, okay, so this this looks, you know, fun. Yeah, and, and you were you were good friends with Rowdy anyway and you were collaborating a lot of that time uh, playing yeah. like Serious Sam in VR and stuff like uh -huh. that. Um, so that's kind of like how I met Rowdy was through Nathy. Mm. And then, like I say, you know, I was at OC4, you know, uh, I didn't get invited there or anything like that. I had to like pay my own way, paid for like the flights, accommodation, travel, everything. And that's where I met Zim. And then we sort of just started talking from there. And that's kind of how the group sort of formed, <laughs> really. Well, I see, I'd, I'd been talking to Nathy for years because we were both, he was kind of YouTube, I was Twitch, and we were just every six months we get together and have yeah, a big yeah, long every chat. Every six months, like this, this interesting chat. <laughs> that would go to like 3 a.m. in the morning, and my wife would, you know, give me a dig. <laughs> <laughs> Every yeah, time exactly. I'm like, I'm talking to Nathan, it's fine, just let's just let me at it. You know, you don't get the, you don't get that opportunity oh. to talk to somebody and like, you know, who who knows VR and and understands it from the same lens you do, right? And yeah. so getting to get together with somebody and just kind of spill the beans and say what you want about all the bits, like mm -hmm. it, it's really it's really nice. And so that kind of germinated and I mean we even were talking about podcasty stuff prior to you getting with Mike. So he kind of disappeared off the radar for six months. And then at OC4, where again, I'd paid my way to go there. And, you know, I was going with the Windlands team um, to kind of camp up with them and help them launch uh, Windlands 2. Um, and then uh, you bumped into this uh, pushy cop who I didn't know was a cop. <laughs> yeah. And that was Mike. And then they gave me a ring the next morning. And it was like, yeah, hell yeah, definitely. Because I knew Nathy. I didn't know Rowdy at all, actually starting into F Reality. But when I joined, I was like, we got to get rid of the name. Uh, I'm not joining if we keep VR inside because I, yeah. I was really unconvinced with that name. And that brand has always been really important to me. Um, you, those of you who know me will know the Zim brand and what that all stands for. Um, it's not just hookers and poker, but uh, <laughs> it's uh, you know I, I, I like I like I like what we've built together. I really like how honest it is, and I really like that um, we get the opportunity and we've made the time. I can't believe we made the time for almost two solid years get together talk about this, not miss a show. I mean, that'll happen at some point. It's going to happen. There's going to be a power outage or something. Something is going to take us out. But we did think about contingency in the early days, and we do keep running it. And it, it like, it sounds great on the, all the platforms. I mean, great work that you do, Mike, um, you know, the, uh, in the aftermath, the production stuff, the post-production stuff that um, a lot of times people don't understand. They just get they just get the cast into their ears or their eyes, and they're like, oh, this is all great. Um, but that's that's Mike's grueling work, and uh, that's a lot of labor that goes into that. And so, you know, hats yeah. off to Mike for having grown from a fledgling caster to, you know, somebody that I put up there with Rogan. So, Mike, hats off to you. Well, thank you very much, man. It's it's, it's kind of it's like a labor of love, you know. It's one of those things that we just enjoy. If we didn't enjoy it, we we just couldn't do no. it. it. You just no. couldn't do it. Um, but so, yeah. So, uh, VR Buck is asking if we have any plans for a TV show. Uh, 
I'm actually going to a TV production studio called Twit.tv, and yeah, I'm going to be... Uh, we do have plans, apparently. I'm going to be stealing their trade secrets <laughs> and uh, talking to them about a reality to see if they want to get into the VR scene. They do they do tech. Uh, they're there in... Um, they're there in the valley, and it's, uh, it's oh. going to be very interesting to see their, their studio. It's one of the things I'm doing when I'm out in California. So uh, I'll... Imagine having a channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah um, that'd be crazy. And then we have Grax, who is asking, did Mike work at Sun Hill? <laughs> yeah, uh, you're talking about the bill. Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> Sun Hill was in, the, it was in the Met. I didn't work in the Met. I worked at a local force. Um, cool. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Still a cool job. But yeah, like, uh, you know, talk Talking about uh, different channels that we are, we did talk about very briefly before the show. Uh, also, casting to Mixer, um, which we might yeah. do in the future. So makes yeah. sense. Mixer's kind of fun for Stay those who don't fun. know, like live uh, live stream platforms. I mean, the differentiation point, the unique selling point with Mixer, is there's like audience interactivity, um, and I don't mean mm. you talking to them. I mean there's an there's an, there's an overlay mm. on the, the the screen essentially, and like one of the things that in a recent test that I did with with, with my audience was. Once they get enough, they can kick off a beach ball. And what happens is on the bottom of the screen, a bunch of hands pop up and everyone has a game and they're interacting with this and they're trying to keep the beach ball in the air. It keeps going faster, bouncing between the hands. And at the end, there's a big cheer and applause or whatever. So if, if you don't care about things that distract <laughs> from your um, entertainment or whatever, it allows people who watch to kind of get something back. They get this kind of point system they call sparks and then they give back. So it's something we'll explore. Um, it might be right fit for us, yeah. it might not, but there you go. Cool. So, so uh, before we officially go, I have one more moment that I kind of want to share. This one sure. was behind the scenes. So Mike decided to touch his, uh, what was it again? His, his uh, internet uh, thingy. Oh, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> and then, and then, and then, okay, just, just. Yeah, so basically like, I, I have crummy internet. Like I, I, my internet sucks. But I am resolving that. Like it's, it's finally going to get fixed next week. This week. Um, yeah, this week coming. Um, but basically, because my internet's so bad, like sometimes I have to reset the router. Like I actually have a microwave link to another building that's got a fiber link. It, it's all crazy. Like the way to get internet to my house is nuts. But anyway, I thought I'd reset it just before the show, so I had a, a fresh sort of uh, you know reset, and the internet would be faster again. And it just didn't come back to life. And it was literally like, what, 20 minutes before the show was going to start. And then, uh, so we panicked. And then I, I think we did it from my phone in the end, right? We did it from my phone. Yeah. Uh, and the show did go go on. But yeah, it was Didn't horrible. you have to go to the roof as well? Yeah. To... Well, this is the thing. There was scaffolding on the side of my house at the time. So I had to climb the scaffolding to the, to the, to the antenna <laughs> and move it, thinking that it was the antenna had gone out of line. So uh... I, was like, I put my life on the line. For the sake of the show but um yeah thankfully we won't have to do that from next week thank god oh, yeah well that was a good one um i want to thank our guest anthony for joining us from yeah. vr 365 and uh, for those yeah. of you who want to continue the party uh, <laughs> I, I will be um i will be on his show very shortly yeah, yeah. go and Thanks carry so on much, the, the fun over there no, really it's, been a, it. it's been an absolute pleasure man and, and yeah i'm yeah. sure we'll have you on the, on the show again in the future it's always interesting to hear your insights i think you've got a really unique insight into the VR industry because like you say you do it every day yep <laughs> awesome so yeah thanks again for joining us we'll see you next week with our thoughts on No Man's Sky no doubt have a great week in VR and until then bye bye for now bye bye see ya <laughs>